So this first session is really a welcome and an orientation, and then we will get into some of the uh, anatomy that we'll be dealing with for the rest of Module 2. We'll talk about all that later. I have new information to share with you, information that besides Rachel and Molly and, and Kim B last night at barbecue, no one else has ever <laughs> hasn't heard this before, not even you. So this is going to be so exciting, this module. Um, what happens when you step into the role of the teacher's seat fully? I've been resisting this for so long. <laughs> I've been resisting. I resisted, I resisted everything. I resisted becoming a yoga teacher, first of all. I'm like, I'm not into the whole jam. That's not my thing. So now I'm a yoga teacher, all, you know, and then it's going well, and I'm excited about it. I'm starting to say things like, um, and namaste, and, you know, getting into the jargon, which I was like, I'll never speak, I'll never do that. I'll never be like, oh, namaste. I don't do that. <laughs> but I do say it. Um, then I said I would never be one of those traveling yoginis. I'll never go, I will never, I used to say I'll never be a yoga journal kind of traveling yoga person. Well, now I'm a faculty of the yoga journal conferences and I travel everywhere teaching. Then I said I will never have my own style. I'm, I, that's not what I'm going for. I never wanted to become like a John Friend is what I said. I, I, will, I don't want to become a John Friend kind of person that starts their style. Everybody is studying their style. It's a thing. Well, then I come up with new anatomy and new movements. I'm, like, but I'm really passionate about that. I think it's healthy for the body and people start to like it and grow from it and, and all of that. So now I have a thing. I've got a thing. I won't call it a style, I call it a thing or a perspective on all yoga forever. Not a style. All of a sudden I have to call it a style because it is one. It's just turned into something that's kind of coalesced that way. Then I say I'll never teach or train, well here we are. Then I say I'll never codify my style and make it a method and that's what this is about because we just did that. And I think it'll make it a lot easier for you. Um, I'll put that to the side. What I'd love to do right now is to have all y'all get to know each other a little bit, which might seem like a Girl Scout thing, but it's, it's really instrumental to knitting us together. So we can maybe start here and then just, just your name, your experience with this style, if any, and what you're looking to get out of the training. Um, my name's Pamela Gagan. I'm from Louisiana. I'm still kind of new to the training. Um, and I just really want to get comfortable with moving people through faster flows uh, mm -hmm. right now because mm -hmm. I like to do restorative, gentle, and yeah. So this is why I'm here. You'll like Liliana's session on Vinyan. She's going to teach you how to incorporate both of them. One of her most popular classes is Vinyan, which I just love that name. Yeah. Vinyan, I'm going to say it again. Yeah. Vinyan. <laughs> it just sounds the way it is. Vinyan. Vinyan. <laughs> so she's, she's meshing the two, and it's going to be nice to have that experience. Cool. Nice. And uh, Pam joined us in New York. So raise your hand if you were in New York Module 1. Cool. Yeah. All right. Thanks. All right. And <clears throat> I'm Allie. Um, and <clears throat> sorry. I teach core power yoga, so it's kind of similar. Uh, I don't know. I've, I've done. I've, done say these videos online and stuff, <laughs> stuff like that, so that's about as far as I go. Um, okay. Which core power do you teach at? I don't teach at core power. Oh, okay. um, I live in, I did my training at core power in Colorado Springs and uh -huh. then we moved to Georgia. Okay. So I teach at like a Baptiste style cool. studio there, but I teach my core power classes there. Awesome. Yeah. Do you know I do, but I, I just moved like two days ago. <laughs> You're saying my sister were actually moving here. Oh, so, cool. wow. Wow. welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Super. I'm Kim. I'm from Louisiana. I was in New York. <laughs> um, Sandy Star came to me as a content uh, blessing from my body. That's I mean that simple. I had um, five or six foot feet surgery, foot surgery surgeries. Um, <laughs> when I was even I was on crutches and in a boot in yoga teacher training. Um, and you are the famous the, woman in a boot. <laughs> woman yeah. in a boot. Yeah. <laughs> the <evolution laughs> training. Yeah. Yeah. But in my original teacher training also. Like, I've, yeah. this is years of surgeries. Oh my god. So, it, even in our regular, but when I, when I was still sitting like this mm -hmm. on 
two blocks, two blankets, and against the wall because I couldn't sit. And this is how I went through my 200 hour. And couldn't keep still. And couldn't keep still. <laughs> and I drove the teacher absolutely nuts. And she tried to make this do fire dog, but I just cried yeah. and, and I just could not do it. And she would like, like anyway. So I was on a video was doing Warrior One and Sadie untwitched my knee and I fell in love with her. I, I swear to you that day. And uh, so that was the number one pose and the number two pose was pigeon by taking the blocks, coming up, squeeze it in, and then take the leg back. Mm -hmm. So so never went anywhere else and that's And um, you're not wearing a boot, I see. And I'm not wearing a boot. And I'm not wearing a boot. And I ran a freaking 5K. Yeah, you did. Everybody might tell you, you can't. I sat in my doctor's office 18 months ago crying, and yeah. I said, oh, am I going to run? Am I going to run? And he's like, you have to take it. So I said, I'm getting my sense of humor back. And I was like, does it matter that I'm really not a runner? Yeah. <laughs> 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 I want to run. I'm like, yeah. I'm this, I want to run. Yeah. Yeah. So I said, yesterday, um, I sent a picture of that jump on Facebook. Around, like, that was after I ran. I was like, on such a high. Mm -hmm. So my doctor's office, like, saying, yeah, I'm going to rock. I mean, you, this is, that's why I put the cover on Facebook. You so, this is a side to heal my body. And I have a community that is, just since I did, we were in New York, two different people who were putting posts about why Catholics shouldn't do yoga. Yeah. And yeah. then here's mine about why you shouldn't do yoga. <laughs> yeah. And so yeah. it's getting interesting. Wow, that's, that's amazing. And it's, you know, it's very easy for me to have an ego about it and go like, yeah, <laughs> I did that. Um, I'm a fire dragon, so I want that really bad. Like, I, I love that. I'm like, <laughs> what? I'm pretty? <laughs> but then, you, I, I, I want to be, I want to be, and I would hope that I am, and people can probably tell you that's true, um, humble enough to say, it's, it's not me. I'm facilitating a new anatomy knowledge in in your body i'm facilitating you to understand that and then to move that way and that's how your body is built it's built like that to um to support itself to rebalance from some of this other inorganic movement whether it's unconscious transitional movement during your day or whether it's unconscious movement into these postures you know um, and then like my angelou said when we know better we do better Right, and you've taken that on, so really, I, I honor you for that, for all the work that you've done, and for wanting to move somewhere deeper in into your body, into your sensitivity. That's huge. Most people just want to phone it in. They want to believe in the style that they were taught, even if it's hurting them, even if they're not feeling great, even if you look at a skeleton with them and go to the knee, and worry one hips forward. The next day, they'll continue to teach that. It's like there's there's sometimes a disconnect, and for me. It's always, um, I'm just going to say this, I think it's a self-worth issue, ultimately, because my goal, my dedication is to my growth and my deepening and my reharmonizing. So if anyone gives me an idea that really helps me to do that, I will throw out the old and bring in the new. In relationships, I do that. In, in study, I do that. In, my, in the knowledge of yoga, I do that. And so I, I know a lot of you in here are on that same path, and I just think that's so powerful. Now we can have a discussion about what works and what doesn't for you instead of like this dogmatic kind of, well, my teacher said this, or like, I want to hang on to this because I'm afraid to be wrong. Yeah, like having God, I was happy to bring that language like, she was yeah. making me do that. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. If I was afraid to be wrong, my head would have exploded by now. <laughs> right? the same way in yoga and life. So thank you. Okay. Hi, I'm Melanie. I'm the little French Canadian. I was <laughs> in New York as well. Um, I'm a personal trainer who was always passionate about dance and true personal training and even my first yoga teacher training. Um, it felt a little interesting stuff, but it felt a little static. And then I just kind of I didn't question it, I just kind of went with the flow with some, you know, I learned some interesting stuff, but it's kind of okay. And um, 
I'm actually doing a therapeutic yoga teacher training in my hometown, which is very rich in theory. Mm -hmm. But I realize that it's very towards people that come in with pathology. They're already injured, and we're learning how to help them, which is interesting. But I needed something. I remember at the Krupalu, I said I need to have my butt kicked. And I did. I went back home. <laughs> I ended up with more classes than I expected. I, did even, I didn't even want more contracts, and I yeah. ended up with more. I had people coming to my class who said, you're on fire, girl. And I'm like, yeah. yeah. And one of the things that struck me in, in your approach, and your style, or whatever you call it, is that it's, it's bringing that movement in within the posture mm -hmm. so it's like I'm dancing again mm -hmm. doing yoga mm -hmm. and I love that at some moment she said because every time I would study thing and because of the personal training with the uh, physical education that I went through it's like I know the mechanic of the body but sometimes I'm like well I can't add my foot at that angle because I don't feel good about it why is it so strict and it's like it's counterproductive to me even with the yoga mentality to sometimes be so strict about 15 at a degree angle on your foot and I'm like, well that doesn't feel right. And it's almost like you gave us the permission to be like, okay, there's 16 people in here, 19 people, there's going to be 19 different downward dogs. We don't have the same body, we don't have the same experience. And I really am looking for more, you know, material to add to this because I started to dance back into the, the practice and the teaching. Seems like my student appreciated. My buddy loves it, so that's mm -hmm. great. Thank you very much. Yeah, cool. There it is. Um, yeah, um, I want to say things so bad right now, but I'm not going to because I'm like, yeah, we have a whole new daughter. It's gonna be very exciting. Very excited. It could be the chai. It's probably what I'm actually really excited. <laughs> <laughs> sure, yeah, it's, not, it's a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B. Very good. Let's pull that. She's like, can you put six pumps in there? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's really early. <laughs> it's long detail. Yeah. Oh, it's so exciting. Why, why wait to put therapeutics into someone's body when, until after they're hurt? Why not use the same principles that can help to rebalance and heal the body before injury occurs so that perhaps we don't get injured like that and perhaps we can have a longevity of practice which is what I think this is meant for. I don't think this practice was meant for us to um, practice for three years, balls out, extremely hard, super on fire and then burn out, tear rotator cuff, you know, bust your knee and then you can't do a lot of these poses for the next 40 years. We have to pace ourselves. And this principle you're talking about, there are 19 bodies, 19 different bodies in class, we call that the adaptation principle. And the adaptation principle will be on your handout that is walking in the door in a moment. Um, states that no two bodies are the same. So although we give guidelines, and I've done the best I can to provide a guideline for what can um, untrack some excess tension in the body to get you back into that deep core body, uh, we, we provide and facilitate those guidelines for students, but then within that, they have the responsibility and hopefully as teachers, you can encourage your students in each class to then adapt to meet their own needs in every pose. So yoga, as I say, is a sensitivity training. It's not just a yoga training. And that's the gift we give to our students, or we can take it away if we're like, do this, leg to foot to 45 degrees, thigh parallel to the floor, blah, 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 blah. Obviously not everybody is gonna fit that and it's not appropriate. So it's exciting, a little freaky to have some breadth and width in your, in your teachings. You don't have the exact answers anymore. But how freeing and beautiful for your students. I'm glad to hear that you feel that yeah, way. Yeah, I like the word responsibly. Yeah. Because you can't be feeling it from outside. I mean, you can look at something and try to reproduce it, but it's manufactured yoga. If you feel it, it's like it's living yoga. Yeah, and I mean, this is a relationship. We're having a relationship with our students. And if a relationship is anything, it's a co-creation. It's not a dictatorship. <laughs> and I never wanted to, I never felt comfortable being elevated in some teacher's seat where it's like I have all the answers and you listen to what I say and you don't know anything that's why you're here in front of the guru 
I had a big mural painted behind me in my, in my studio in New York City that said, the guru is the self, while I would be teaching, because I think it's, it's just a partnership. <laughs> Welcome, Mr. T. Yay. She knows she's in trouble. <laughs> what? She's like, I'm so in trouble. I'm going to get him to get them. She's doing a good job. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right, Kim. I'm here. For those of you who don't already know, you can show up for me, I came to a training with Sadie in Austin after, like everyone else, finding her on YouTube looking for some kind of core inspiration. Since I was teaching Pilates and yoga, I wanted to merge the two, and I didn't know how. So I found her style, and I'm like, what is this core? This isn't really core. I know. <laughs> Everyone wanted to kill their abdominal wall. <laughs> Where's the core work? Um, but I loved it, so I used a lot of stuff. Temple pose happened for like two years, the whole <laughs> temple sequence, just because I was looking for something. Anyways, I took a training in Austin, and I was pretty much ready to quit yoga because my wrists were completely ruined. My front hip flexors totally ruined. My sitting bone connection, I don't know if anyone's ever had yoga butt oh, or doing I taught hot yoga for a long time too, so I had like, I couldn't even forward fold without. Mm -hmm. So I was ready to quit and um, as soon as we started practicing, I was like, wait, I feel like I can do this again. And I asked one question because I was scared. The room had like 50 flipping people in it and I was like, well, I have a student with a wrist problem. <laughs> Bim Key. <laughs> yeah, so I, I was like, what if... Oh. Anyway, so from that point on, my mother and I both have the same problems because she practices with me every day. Um, we went back and boom, like all that stuff is gone. The hip hip flexor stuff, the, the butt stuff, the wrist stuff, and sold. Yeah. Totally sold. I went home, threw out everything I was teaching, started all over. I just said, sorry guys, hope you like it. And they loved it. Yeah. They loved it. And it just, it blossomed. Really. And you got an opportunity to start that studio called Dark Star Yoga. How cool is that? I know. It sounds like a Star out. Wars. <laughs> sounds like a Star Wars. <laughs> yeah. I was getting a lot of black for teaching a, a weird style because I was told I was reinventing the yoga wheel. It's good for you. Oh, yeah. And it's not water. And they were like, thank you. <laughs> yeah. what, is they said, what is this bullshit you're teaching? You're watering down yoga. You're reinventing the wheel. And I was like, it needs to be reinvented. But it works for me, and I feel beautiful when I'm teaching it. I feel beautiful when I'm practicing that way. Other people say the same thing. They're like, I just feel so free. And freedom is yeah. beautiful. Yeah. So. Every moment should be reinvention. Yeah, it's like, what, what's the meaning of, of living or transformation in any way? It's, it's that you're not the same as you were before. In the, you've grown. You are different. You are a little bit different. You, the alchemy is different. You have dropped away some of your outer resistances. Hopefully, to reveal that inner truth more. Yes, it's all an evolution. Um, oh my God, I've gotten that for years. For years, I've got this side where everybody's like, I embrace it. I feel so good. It's healing my. It's healing my this that the other things. SI instability and all that. It's. My students love it, all this. And then I've got these people that say, you're not, you're not teaching real yoga. You're not really a yogi. They call me Satan. They call me... I've been reading that for years. Because you know Yes, you're on it. I, she is. They, they, tell, they tell me I'm, I'm blasphemous. I am not teaching... Like, wow, how wild. And none of those people have ever taken a class with me. I invite them to. In fact, one one <laughs> blogger, one of those bloggers came to Omega because they thought I was only about weight loss. I have hundreds of videos. Um, some of them are about weight loss because that's one of the things that attract people to yoga. And I want to bring people in from all different avenues. I also have yoga for insomnia and yoga for uh, postnatal, and but nobody cares about that. They just want to center on what they don't like, right? Weight loss or weight maintenance. Weight can be mental, spiritual, emotional, physical. I always say that. There's never like, let's, let's get buff. Let's, you know, me and Jillian Michaels are not going to do it anytime soon, probably. But that's it. <laughs> um, she does need some yoga anatomy. <laughs> What's up with non yoga teachers teaching yoga on that train? It's popular. It's popular. Yeah. Um, that's that. So one of those, one of those, um, Hater aid, you know, 
drinking people um, came to Omega for a weekend and totally transformed her idea of me, which was great. She was one of the, yeah, wait, wait, I said she came and she said, although I prefer to do a more therapeutic, gentle style in my own practice, I really, now I see like you've got a lot of knowledge. I'm like, thank you. I wish more of them would come, but it's not my concern. My concern are the people who are resonating and the people who I can talk to, you know what I mean? Um, but we just did a workshop at Dark Star for all their teachers because Kim put out an email and said, um, every teacher at this studio, if you want to stay, you're, you are now going to be required to teach this style. Um, it's what we're about. It's what we're going to be holding our trainings in. And I want us all to be aligned. You can teach it your own way. It's, it's a vessel for your own self-expression, but still following the principles. And what happened? Nobody left. Mm-hmm. Nobody left. Yeah. Everybody, everybody loves it so much and they believe so strongly. I've got some really strong yogis in mm-hmm. my studio that have been teaching for a long time and have had very strict trainings and they love it. The minute they took the class, they were like, <gasps> and of course the minute they met you guys, they were like, <laughs> 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 well, they, you know, they wanted to keep them there for like 24 hours straight. So. Oh yeah. When you can explain something logically, when you can explain this work logically and be like, it's not, it's not about Tyler and I. It's about things that we've learned also coming from very strict styles, also coming from very dogmatic styles that just seem to work more efficiently and effectively in the human body. So why wouldn't I want my students to have those tools, you know? And I think when people experience it with their bodies and see it, that's when, that's when most of them, if they can let go, of some of the, it must be this way. Mm -hmm. There's a difference between anatomy and yoga alignment. Often a very big difference. Not always, sometimes they align better, sometimes not so much, but just because you know how to align a yoga pose classically does not mean you're working along with the human physiology necessarily. And that's really good to know. So it's like, okay, now we know more about anatomy, let's look at that. Thanks. It was so fun to come teach for them. You could see them. You could see them like a couple of them were tweaking out a little bit. <laughs> they learned like big, you know, big toe mount down, 45 degree foot, shin, shin over here, knee in here, leg, hip, you know, coccyx, you know, all this stuff. And, and you could just see them going, how do I? And one of them did have a bit of a meltdown after. She was like, how do I? I have to, I did, I have to throw out everything. Well, you know, I undo everything. everything. Yeah. Yeah. But you know what she was able to do after um, taking a class for me and then taking a class? Mm-hmm. She was able to shoot back from Bakhasan into Chaturanga, and it was the first time she was ever able to do that, even throughout all of her training. Mm-hmm. So she was like, ding. So, yeah. Ding. And, and one thing, you don't have to throw out your entire style. Don't throw stuff out. Keep what works for you. Keep, keep what works for you and your students. And add this as an additional tool to infuse your teaching with this, what is a transitional practice. So I think this style is very compatible with all other styles of yoga because it is getting you into the position. It's the transition from ground to pose that we're most concerned with in this style. After that, you you have that outer body knowledge you can refine. That's beautiful, but now you have an infrastructure for the pose, for each pose, that is built as, as consciously as in, in this incarnation, we can get it. And I can't wait to hear your feedback and your ideas and, and all the teachers and students in this room so that we can, we can grow the style even more fully and give us, give us ideas or be like, I don't get that. Or in my training or my understanding of the body, it's like this. If I'm going to change, I'll change something if I need to. It's a collaboration. Okay, I'm going sh- to not talk as much. I'm going to let you guys go through. <laughs> it's hard. I was going to say, that's been really cool for me to observe and witness is how you've changed your teaching over the years. Because uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but for some reason, I remember the first video I found of yours being Shiva and Shakti kicks. Yeah. And I feel like you said, don't bend your elbows or yeah, keep your arms yeah. straight. Um, and then the next time you came around, I was like, don't keep your arms straight. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I mean, I, for the first part of my teaching, I was really into, I called it core strength vinyasa yoga because it was about the abs. It was like, we need more core strength. And before I started studying with Leslie for the past few years, I was teaching a lot of linear practice, just adding kind of 
rectus abdominis, an oblique work, really. And that, so you see the earlier YouTubes, which I'm going to start taking off. Oh, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm creating a new channel for just the new stuff, but, oh yeah, I'm, I'm arms straight, super straight, super strong, straight legs, straight everything. I'm still teaching more linear, although you can see the beginning of my body wanting to wave. And I have to evolve. As I learn more, you, you can't um, access or spring up the arches of your hands and feet any, Leslie says it's impossible. I don't know if it's impo you can lift your toes with straight legs, but it's way harder with straight legs and straight arms to access that arch support because you have to use physics. Talk more about that. But so I learned it. I'm like, bye bye, straight arms. You did it too, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, it's continual evolution. It's always mm -hmm. always changing, and I was never dogmatic. I didn't see any point in that. Why should I? Why should I say? It is this way because someone told me that's the way it's supposed to be, or they told me that I should say that. That doesn't work for me. Um, I, I know the human body is a continual, we're continually understanding. This is not the, the end either. This is a continual evolution, continual understanding, and the deepening of this quality of the body, which is ultimately, we can't ever understand it completely. You know, it's always beyond us because there are so many levels to it. This isn't just a physical experience, this is an energetic, it's a mental. There's all the different levels to it. So it's a beautiful, beautiful deepening and understanding every moment. Yeah. And the idea of evolution and what Kim had mentioned about people getting kind of rigid, you know, and stuck in these ideas of how it should be from a classical perspective. One of my students after a philosophy lesson said something that I felt to be really profound. She said that she started to recognize that we don't change for yoga, the yoga changes for us and adapts for us, and that's why it's still, it's still here. Yeah, something's got to shift and morph, otherwise it's so boring. Who has all the answers in here, anybody? None of your teachers, none of them have all the answers. They're all putting in a piece of their expertise. They're all focusing you on something to help add and build a holistic understanding of yourself, of your life, of the nature of moving through the world in some way. And therefore, nobody who's ever taught yoga has, has a perfect system. Nobody. So why hang on to that? But to take the bits and pieces that work for you. Leave the rest. You know? That's always been my key to growth. My name's Thea, and um, I have a small studio in Los Angeles, and I live in Orange County, and I teach there as well. And just before I came on, came onto the plane, uh, I got to sub my husband's class because he also teaches yoga, mm -hmm. and um, I used, well, I did the rock star training, which just totally like changed my practice completely. And um, I teach curvy yoga as well, so I've been able to like put those things together. And when I covered my husband's class, which is just a vinyasa class, I brought the core strength in. And there was this one gentleman who, he's like, I've been doing this sport for 30 years, and I've never used my core. This was one of the Orange County yogis, and he was like, so when are you teaching a class here? Yeah. And I'm like, 5 o'clock on Wednesdays. He's like, crap, I have no excuse to miss it. <laughs> That's great. I'm just looking to get more to um, inform my practice. Yes. Um, I'm really passionate about teaching. Mm -hmm. I. T it took me nine years to get to teaching. Like I was so passionate, but I thought like you know in LA there's a certain like yogi, mm -hmm. you know image, yeah. and so I was really caught up in that. And then finally, I just um, pushed myself, you know, like and finally just. Well, I'm a hypnotherapist too, so finally I just was like, you know what? I'm good at directing people, getting people where they need to be motivated. So why don't I just motivate myself and do a training? So a year and a half ago, I did my first training, and since then I've done four other trainings. Wow, so, cool. That's awesome. I love that you embraced who you are and, and then became a role model for others like that, for your tribe, instead of trying to fit yourself into a mold of something else. That's really powerful. It's something for all of us to ponder. And when we say embrace who you are, we'll, we'll do a session on finding your core message in this training. And 
one of the things is to stop trying to be that other person that you wish you were and be the person that you are to so that you unite where you um, where you think you should be and, and, and where you actually are, those things actually start to harmonize. And then you become you more fully and you can represent and your tribe will find you, not some like Sean Corn copy. Because I can go to Sean Corn. I don't need a clone. You know? So it's very cool. Curvy yoga is the best. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hi. Um, I'm Melissa Scott, and I am from Birmingham, Alabama. I was also in New York with some of these fabulous ladies. Um, I like your t-shirt. <laughs> 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 I might. <laughs> I walked, wait, I walked in this from Ruth Ann's studio. I walked, she has the Zen Zone in Kansas City. Awesome, and just so funny. And I came, I came there for one of my first workshops with you guys, and there are all these t-shirts there that said Sadie yeah. Rocks. It was like... <laughs> I was like, remember, I was like, that's so weird. Who my name? Uh, <laughs> I go, weird, you found t-shirts with my same name on it. That's really crazy. And she was like, uh, we made them for you. I was like, <gasps> I never even thought that's of that. the cutest thing I've ever seen. Your face is like, this, wow, in my name. And I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm, not, I'm not that kind, I'm not that kind. You know? Yeah, I mean, I'm not that kind to be like, oh, awesome, yeah, I do rock, yeah. Thanks for making t-shirts, that time. <laughs> That's really anyway. Oh, and now we have Tyler yoga ones. Yeah. Um, awesome. 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 <laughs> um, yeah, I would to say, I don't know, read my blog post. Yes. Um, recently. Yes. So, so, good. Good. so, so, um, so I'm a, a therapist as well, I'm a counselor, and, um, and I've been teaching course strength vinyasa for almost two and a half years. I did my first training with you, and um, the great gift that Core Strength has given me is it's given me the opportunity to bring my therapeutic language into the yoga room, mm -hmm. and to talk about dissolving outer body tension, and getting rid of the masks, and letting down your defenses, and finding the true strength inside, and people love it, like it just, it rocks people's worlds, and um, I don't know, I live this stuff, like I just, I live it, and it has changed my life and empowered me in so many ways and um, helped me really kind of go through the final healing stages of an eating disorder that I recovered from here, years ago and being in my own truth. So it just is awesome. And um, I'm the only core strength thing as a teacher in Alabama. <laughs> and so it gets a little lonely, but I'm leading my first 200 hour teacher training starting mm -hmm. March 14th. Nice. And cool. we're sold out. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. It's the largest teacher training ever in the state of Alabama. Oh my god. Yeah. That's, so That's cool. incredible. Yeah. Very, very cool. And it's just me. Like I'm just a little one woman show and I'm up against like these huge corporate wow. stuff. So um they want you to come. <laughs> I've already <laughs> asked for you. Like, uh, they want you guys. So. We'll pop in for well, sure. Well yeah, it's nine months, so Oh yeah. Just yeah. let us know. Oh, come That's on great. Back. I'd love to do that. Yeah. So oh, fantastic. And we will all be reading your blog post because it's in a hand time. Yes. Uh, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Because I thought yeah. I couldn't have said it better myself, Thank so um, I just I printed that for you guys too. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm just really excited to be here and continuing. And there's about to be a whole bunch of course strength and teachers in Alabama. So nice. Wow, yeah. that's great. This is the perfect timing then, because mm -hmm. it's, it's um, it hasn't shifted. It's just coalesced more clearly. Yeah, cool for you guys. So you have a map now. Awesome. Yeah. We heard from Rachel. <laughs> uh, I'm Marietta. Um, I have been on the yogic path for about 15 years now. Um, New York, I'm from New York. Yeah, I live in New York. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little, I, I flew in last night, I got in, I landed at like 10.30, so I'm a little wonky still, you know, it was a long, long day, but um, I'm really excited to be here. I've been, um, I was teaching Anyasara yoga for a long time, um, and I was almost certified. So I'm, I'm, I guess I still have an Anyasara inspired teacher, but uh, and I was really close to my certification when Anyasara had their big blowout, uh, and then I was really cranky and <laughs> resistant to yoga. For I mean, I was still teaching, so, and so I, I teach yoga and I do body work and nutrition work. Um, but uh, I was really resistant to like all sorts of organized yoga because I was feeling really cranky and curmudgeonly about everything and I'd go in and teach my classes. But a few years ago I took a, like a, like a three hour workshop with Sadie. She came to a yoga studio on Staten Island 
And I really enjoyed, you know, this idea of moving from the core because it was something that I was trying to teach to my students, move from the core rather than the periphery, but I couldn't really express it. Like I had no languaging to get it to them. Um, so then when I saw that this training was coming out, I was like, you know what, this is the right time. Um, because like you, I wanted to start, you know, training teachers because that's what I really love. I love working with teachers. Yeah. Um, so uh, I was like, you know what, I really want this. I want to have this credential because it's another thing of mine. I wanted like this 500 hour <laughs> credential. So, um, but it was perfect because I did the, the module one and I thought my students were going to be pretty resistant to it because they'd been dyed in the wool and you saw you would use it. Um, I just came back and I was like, we got some new stuff, and you know, and that's what I exactly what I did. I incorporated more as this work as the transitional work, and I didn't change my style. But I found like I, that I needed a whole lot less cueing, a whole lot less inner thighs. Well, there's still plenty of inner thighs back, but, you know, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so many spirals, but not so many spirals and not so many loops. You know, I didn't like I need the spirals and the loops a lot less because we're moving into the pose from a much or more organic way and people have loved it, you know? I, my students are really, um, they're digging it and um, I'm, I'm really happy. Um, I was a little resistant to it in the beginning too. I, yeah. it, like it just felt so um, against what I had been ingrained into myself and so I was like, oh, I have to, I have to redo everything. But I, when I kind of embodied it in myself and in my practice, I realized I wasn't changing it. I'm just kind of tweaking this transitional phase, mm -hmm. and then if I want to throw some loops and spirals, and I can. But I, I really, I really haven't needed to, so it's been, um, it's been refreshing. And uh, yeah, that's cool, and that says something. I mean, Anasar is one of those, one of those very Rigid. regimented. Like if you're an Anasar yogi, you say that, and that's like it. So to hear that it can integrate is really um, uh, encouraging for me to hear. I was wondering how that would work. I meant to ask you about it. And I think what really, you know, what really helped is that one of the, you know, one of the things are still the same. It was still not the same, but like foundation is so important in both styles. So we're, we're still moving from that place and then there's less lingo. So I don't have to spend breaking it down for like the two new people in my class, you know, what does inner spiral mean? You know, because mm -hmm. I, I don't really need it anymore. And that was something that I struggled with was that I felt like, you know, everyone had to take a workshop and people were confused and it was, it was taking years unless people did an immersion mm -hmm. to really embody those principles in their body. It took a while and this, I, I don't need, like, I don't need to use that lingo anymore. So that's good. And I'm not saying I'm not bashing on Usara by any means because I, I think it taught me how to be a really um, great teacher and how to verbalize well and also how to theme my class as well. So. I wouldn't say that it's totally worthless or useless, you know. Got you here. Right. Yeah, it got me here. So, mm -hmm. um, but so it's it's really turned out well. That's great. Mm -hmm. I love that. Thanks. You're awesome. You <laughs> <laughs> all are awesome. I'm like, so are you. Oh no. Um, <laughs> oh, I gotta make some shit up. <laughs> but it's to from myself to step through a lot of fear and unknown and then just knowing and trusting it that everything's going to be okay. Mm -hmm. That um, has just kept me going and not be so stressed out. And I think New York was such a high energy. I was like exhausted. But when I got home, I did the work. I journaled. I did the work. And I had conversations with people that I needed to have. And man, it felt really good. It was so hard, but I did the work and I journaled it like my ass off. But mm -hmm. um, and to attract what you want, and I really thought before I went to New York I was doing that, mm -hmm. but I really wasn't. Mm -hmm. 
So getting deep into that, and then, you know, I've kind of had to let a couple of instructors go that really had big classes, and then I stepped in, and you know, you know. Mm -hmm. Even as the owner, you think, that class had, you know, 40 people in it, and then it's me. And you see, right in the beginning, you see the 10 faithful front rowers. Yes. No, they're not here. Oh, you know what? Who cares? I'm teaching everybody. Yeah. Then right before I left, I got it back up to the 50s. So now I started search. And for my own body, I had knee replacement. But that butter asana and bending my back knee, I did not hurt. And my back's not hurting anymore. That's great. Oh, my God. It's amazing. Because she came so, in. She was in a lot of back pain for a long yeah. time. And um, I mean, I have a little, but just like do you did. bending your back knee. And then I have so many people now coming out because I teach yoga one on one too. If you want people to be a certain way in your studio, don't let your newest instructor to teach that yeah. <laughs> because you want everybody to, you know. And so many people have came up now with chaturanga. I'm like, you know what? You got shoulder stuff. This is the way we're doing it. Just and I was, you know, just for fun, we're going to go to our knees now. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> it is. Turns out it's just as hard. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> just for absolutely no fun yeah. whatsoever. <laughs> People have now came up and been like, thank you. Because I took mm -hmm. over, and I don't know what class I really took over, but it was in my own studio, so shame on me. But I mean, it was like vinyasa on the crap. And it's, ooh, chaturanga up, ooh, chaturanga up. And it was like three vinyasa flows. And great, now we're going to do four. And it's, it's good because I was like, this. So by doing and changing just the shoulder movement and just the upward, because I was had a lot of fear with that, mm -hmm. a lot of fear with that with my back, and I was always a little, little cobra, you know, don't. And now I'm like, ooh, and I feel good, and it's changed my business, it's changed myself, mm -hmm. and just given me even, the scary a bigger voice, but <laughs> <laughs> I still think as a um, as an extrovert, you still kind of have that fear, and I just kind of. Work. I'm gonna keep on working. That's so, so good. Here. That's so good. Uh, and by the work, do you mean by Katie's the work, or you mean just the work that we set out for you, like as part of just getting just to, to move through fear mm -hmm. more and to face things immediately versus thinking about it so much and worrying about mm -hmm. it so much and who will it affect. I still am a yeah. super feely person, but um, I just handle things better, and then it makes it so much easier two weeks from now mm -hmm. and just to still be kind about things but to check some things off I guess really it's just to move through fear and to let go of the past and we're going to do a session on that this this time um, uh, I'm writing your relationship with you mm -hmm. in order to take the teacher's seat even if you're not teaching it doesn't really matter the, the point is to step into your own skin and how do you look at that inner relationship and see if it's functional or dysfunctional because I thought I was great like right before I met Tyler, I, I sat with my, I, it wasn't great. I thought I was fine. I did my work. I'm, I'm really good. You know, and I sat with myself and there were, I looked inside and there were definitely places where I was participating in a dysfunctional relationship. Yeah. And when I, when I did the work on that and started dedicating to that, everything else out here went. That's how I'm feeling yeah. now mm -hmm. is the Ooh, and then you're like, ooh, ooh. you know, it's, it's like you do a Shakti kick and you actually hover it for a second. You're like, <gasps> There's that, like, oh shit, you know? <laughs> that's that's and how I it can say that like. to people too in the yoga world. I'm like, you know, not everybody's going to like, like me, but there's other teachers and mm -hmm. I can't really do anything about that. And then I said something like, just go to somebody else's class or just go to another studio. That's totally fine. And, yeah. and they, so free. they laughed and I'm like, yeah, I wasn't really kidding. <laughs> <laughs> People like, come up to you as teacher and not and not like yeah. your style or who you are and want to change you. Yeah. Have you ever noticed that? People will be like, can you change yourself? Because I don't like it. Yeah. And, and you have to decide whether it's something you can shift and it's something important for you to shift that will bring you into a better, more holistic experience of yourself. Um, or if, if you are really standing in yourself and your truth, you can say things like that. You can say, you know, this is what I teach. But I know if you're if you're in looking for if you're looking for a more linear outer body style that gives you half the benefits, then you can go down the street. I know it. No, but don't I'll say that. that. <laughs> I'll be like, no. No, but say you if know, you want, I'm if you want. In the studio, so I'm yes. just like, you know, this is something that if it can take you here or explore or whatever. Yeah. 
you want a more kind have. of classical feel, go to this studio or this teacher. You want a more kind of, you want a shtanga, you want a gentle practice, you want more yin. I'm not going to turn into a gentle yeah. teacher anytime soon. Right. Pert Sadie is not going to turn into a gentle teacher. Um, I can do it if I need to, but that, I'm teaching stronger vinyasa yoga people how to kind of shore up the practice. Because that's, I feel like, where a lot of injury. You can teach a gentle style using these cues, that's fine. So some, I've had people come to my class, like, it's way beyond me. It's not even like I can chip away at it. This would be el an elderly person who hasn't done yoga, who's, who's building strength way, way there. So I will say, I don't say, oh, let me, you know what, next time you come to class, I'll teach a gentle class for you and the other 19 people can just do that. I would never, I, my intensity level remains very constant, so people know what they're getting. But, I don't know, it's a, it's a really good question to ask yourself when people in your life are disappointed with you, have expectations of you, don't, don't get what you're doing, don't like what you're doing. You have to be willing for them to drop away in order to attract mm -hmm. your tribe, make space. You always need to listen to the environment around us, people, what they say. But it always comes in first, and then you evaluate and say, is that true for me? Is this something that needs to change or not? And a lot of times it's not. It's like, thank you. I, I, I appreciate your perspective. It's very interesting to me. So you can go somewhere else now, or what you like. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. I have a really big um, uh, belief. You might be like, she's a dragon, too. I, you might have this, too. I have a belief that I can do anything, anything. You need the moon pulled down out of the sky. I want it. I want it. I will get it for you. I don't know how yet, but it's going to happen. You know. And then I have to realize my own limitations, and that's always a big blow. And when I met Tyler, I thought for sure I could just be like, "You need to change that because it makes me uncomfortable." <laughs> change it. And he's been really good. Or I would like make it happen somehow, like or his timing. You know, my God, like. Your timing cannot be shifted by me or anyone. <laughs> and I'm like, no, do it faster, do it sooner, do it now. And he's been a very good teacher for me in that way. To be like, there are some things that you can <laughs> shift and control. In, in, you can ask other people, can you, can you shift this in some way because it's affecting me this way? Yes or no, that's up to him. I know that now. And then what's all up to me 100% is how I decide to deal in response to what's going on in my environment. How we react. How I react and how I act. That's what you got. It works for me, it doesn't work for me. Those are my questions to answer. But that's been a really good um, lesson. So now if I'm going to approach Tyler about something, I will not say, you did, usually, you did this, you did <laughs> I will say, hey man, <laughs> here's my sitch. What do you think? Can you do anything? Okay, he's like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ponder that. I'm gonna do what I feel is is right for me around that situation. What I can, what I can give, and what I can and won't. And I say, great. And I'll watch that, and I'll see if it works for me. That's that's all I can do. It's so freeing. Thanks for coming. Thank you. I'm Mallory, and I'm from Austin, Texas, and. Well, I live here. I'm not from here, originally. <laughs> but uh, this practice came to me through Liliana. Um, when I left my old studio, she gave me a couple of trainings and was like, this will block your world. And I was like, okay, chill out. <laughs> um, I'm a very loud extrovert, so I'm like, anything can, has the ability to rock my world. Like, I just get very excited easily. And it really did. And my my teaching style used to be very, very loud and very, very athletic and surprise. <laughs> and what I really liked about the core strength style is that it quieted down my own projections and it allowed me to teach from a balanced place of coming more inside of my own body and feeling that deep core line that just it vibes on every color. It's not just, you know, the certain teaching voice that you put on. It's everything. And you kind of get to experience that with your students. And that's what really made this work just come alive for me, is that I feel like I'm having authentic conversations with people, even though I'm just guiding them through their practice. Mm -hmm. And people are discovering things that they've never discovered before. You see, like, the lights come on in their eyes, and you're like, I 
no, just keep doing it. It's great. <laughs> and you see people come back and ask questions. And I've, I've always wanted to have that kind of relationship with my students. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I'm now having it. And it's really great. Nice. Cool. And I'm just really happy. I, I love seeing it. <laughs> it makes me so happy. It's like, it's like seeing family again. Oh, and okay. Everybody who's new, like, every time I see you again, I'm going to be like, oh, my God, remember that time that we did this? It was so great. Um, <laughs> I'm a fire, I'm, a, I'm an earth dragon, excuse me. Um, I feel like a fire dragon sometimes. Um, I'm an earth dragon, and um, family and tradition is really important to me, and you guys are all now part of my family. So. Super bonding. Mm. <laughs> I feel like the bond happens as people talk, it like starts to wave, and then by the time we're done, we're, we're all bonded. Oh, and we know each other better. So nobody's a stranger in here anymore. Thanks. Cool. Thanks. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm Liliana. Thank you guys for being here, and thanks for being in the space. Um, kind of like Sadie said, if you need anything, if you have questions, uh, let me know. Let Mallory know, too. Um, I'll put some of that on her, too. So. <laughs> um, I don't really know where to start. Uh, I was a dancer my whole life since I was about three years old, so it was 20-something more than years of ballet and modern and movement and I did a little bit of yoga when I was in high school. It was kind of part of, you know, just dance stuff and I moved to Austin to pursue a career in dance and I went to UT. I was in a really awful car accident that took me out of school and out of everything and I refound yoga in a really therapeutic way. It kind of helped me rehab and I knew that that's really what I wanted to do. So uh, I was teaching a lot of different things, trying to incorporate the, the dance-like element and the vinyasa flow, uh, and then the healing elements that I kind of picked up and learned along the way. And uh, I loved it, it was great. I uh, was teaching at a studio with Tyler and Mallory was there for a little bit and it started to not be as fun anymore. It started to feel kind of gross and toxic and icky. And I was kind of, I'm gonna echo Cam, like just ready to just say, all right, I don't do this anymore. Done, bye, later. Just something wasn't right. And uh, Tyler and I were, I guess, texting or chatting on Facebook or something. And he was like, come to this training after I just quit my job and like had no idea what I was doing anymore. And, he was like, just come. And I was like, Tyler, just quit my job. No, I'm not doing that. And he just kind of kept like twisting my arm a little bit. So in August, I went to Yogi Yoga and I did the training with you guys. I and mean, it's so funny how things just happen in the universe. Uh, I was like, this is interesting and I like this. And it's, it's like, if anybody else is a dancer, it's like release technique, but in yoga. Yes. And I was like, oh, well, this is beautiful. It makes total sense. And it was during the training that um, my husband found this space. How, so, did he, how did he tell you about it? Oh, this is great. Um, well, so my husband's in a, you'll meet him. He was here earlier. He's awesome. Uh, he's in the restaurant world. So we were, we have plans and it will happen one day soon, hopefully. We're working on a bistro cocktail bar. So we were uh, looking for a location for that, and uh, he found this space, and he comes to pick me up from a day at Yoga Yoga for training, and I'm like in the car, and he's like, come on, I'm gonna go show you something. Like, let's, let's go, we're gonna check out this space. And he's acting really weird, and <laughs> like kind of quiet, and if you meet him, he's really deadpan usually, and like, I mean, that's all he is. But I can tell you <laughs> kind of something, and I was like, what are you? I don't know. I was like, okay, fine. So we finally get here and we pull up. You think you're going to go look at a restaurant? I think we're going to, yeah, yeah, we're going to look for a space or restaurant. And so we get in and I was like, oh, well, this is cute coffee shop. Like, I've never been in here before. I had no idea what it was. And as soon, like, he opens the door and he is about to, he's like stepping out of the car and I'm still in the seat. He's like, by the way, this isn't a restaurant. This is your yoga studio. And then shuts the door. <laughs> I'm like, Dragon. And I was just like, yeah, he's a dragon. He's a dragon. He's a fire dragon. Yeah. So I was just like, I was pissed. I was so mad at him. I was like, I'm not doing yoga anymore, remember? I don't even like it anymore. Like, so I get out of the car and, like, and we come inside. And this was, uh, this was the, the Arabic bazaar, like, 
hookahs and belly dancing stuff. Like, thousands of lamps. Just oh god. <laughs> <laughs> it looks so much smaller. Uh-huh. And I was like, okay, and like I just kind of walked around and I was feeling it out, and I was like, okay, all right, <laughs> like doing this thing, and I, I didn't make up my mind for a while. But I came here like after the training and like for about a week and I sat in front and I like stalked this building. <laughs> and I was like, okay, what is this coffee shop? Like who comes here? There's a bike shop next door, that's kinda cool. Yeah. And I just you know, the universe kind of like the training and like the, because it's so similar to what I did and like it's kinda similar to how I was teaching anyway, but with a slightly different vocabulary. I don't know, when the universe is like oh yeah, I mean you'd have to be just an idiot to not. So here we are, and then thank you for being here. So um, I don't know, I'm just excited, and this is a thing now. So. Yeah. <laughs> so what's the story with the connecting it to turning it to your... Like she, well, here's the connection. Liliana wrote me one day, and she's like, oh, and we're going to be a core strength Vinyasa yoga studio, too. <laughs> I was like, what? Exactly. Awesome. Okay. We were like, mm-hmm. it was the first. It was the first one. I mean, this. there are thousands of teachers teaching this style, but pivotal, pivotal moments like that, the first studio opening up, and, and on the heel, the second studio opening up. I told her, I'm like, we're going to be sister studios. Yeah. yeah. So on board. It's so, it's so yeah, exciting. She that door right so up. she just really, like, just let us know that, because that's what she wanted to do. And we were completely on board. And I remember um, our Ava, our manager, was kind of like, don't you need to sign, like, a contract or something? No, they need to, like... Be vetted. I'm like, no, man. Mm-hmm. The more, the better. You know, the more, the more. Go, go, enjoy it. That's what I told her. Well, and it was such. I mean, like the way the whole thing happened. Like it was just kind of a pivotal moment, and it just speaks really to the style and the core message of the, the teaching too. And I was like, well, duh. Yeah. That's okay. Are right. you teaching some of the noons? And you have the for us on Friday and Monday, and Mallory's going to teach too. Yay. Uh, Okay, if you need anything, if anyone else, I know that um, Melissa and Kim mm-hmm. were also open to, oh, I'd love to. teaching yeah. those yeah. if you need someone to jump cool. in. That sounds good. Uh, I've had a couple of days. But I, that's great because you can see how different people have incorporated the style differently. Um, I'm, I'm so happy we're here too. Thank you. And if you guys could do her a solid, because she has canceled classes for us to be here. She's a new studio. Okay? That's like, why I was like, yeah. wow. So that's why, in part, we're holding the noon as a public class too, so she can at least get a few people in here. Yeah. And then we're, so the, the day ends at four actually, but then we're going next door and they're expecting us for an hour so we can continue to have a Q&A or whatever you need to talk about or whatever we need to talk about. Sometimes your teacher will be taking you there, so Molly will be doing the Ayurveda and then taking you there to order according to your dosha, oh. your doshic type. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so we're trying to incorporate, but uh, so they can teach the four. And Just Saturday trying. and Sunday, we are available mm-hmm. until five, so oh, good. Here. Oh, so cool. if we don't want to go next door on Saturday and Sunday, that's perfect. Great. Mm-hmm. Um, so okay. if you could do her that, these, the following favor. Mm-hmm. Tweet and Instagram and Facebook the shit out of Hyde Park Yoga Company, okay? Like, just Ooh, take yeah. pictures here, let people know you're here, tag mm-hmm. hashtag Austin Yoga, hashtag yoga, mm-hmm. and, and do all stuff. Maybe you could write down, like, the hashtags and the and the and your, your Twitter name, your Instagram name, and your uh-huh. Facebook name. Mm-hmm. That would obviously help spread the word about this place. Hyde right? Park Yoga Co. Yeah. And then you can also hashtag HPYC. Which is also interesting enough, someone is using that as a yacht club. Yeah. I think it's yeah. Something, something yacht club. Yeah. And I was like, oh, all right, cool. Well, I'm going to take it over. I think so it's there's like four go. posts on it. Yeah. So yeah. HPYC or Hyde Park Yoga Co. at or hashtag is perfect. Yeah. And hashtag Austin, hashtag yoga. So people searching for those things, not just Hyde Park Yoga Co. Hashtag. Yeah. Hashtag me. Hashtag Austin. I teach at four. So oh, and her, you teach at four tonight. Teach Great. Four. So if anyone wants to um, do more yoga, yeah. Or no, because you're doing your session. Class at four yeah. It's okay. You'll have enough yoga. The thing is, you'll get to do an hour of practice. You know, you're getting twelve to one every day, and you can take that as a full-on practice. So that's that's why we wanted to offer you guys. So you, so you're in, and then whoever else can fit in here is in. Um, what else is I thinking? What else is on your list? You said first to do a few things for. That was it. 
Um, okay, <laughs> sign in too because multiple social media. Yeah, that's a few. You know, that's your social media. attendance sheet also. It's on the agenda. Uh -huh. um, so Aaron, her husband, is I don't know what to call him. He, he's like the lead mixologist at, around town. He's yeah. a beverage entrepreneur. Beverage <laughs> entrepreneur. Yeah. And he he um, created uh, the cocktail menu and also is there sometimes still. I think mm -hmm. at the Midnight Cowboy. Oh, yeah. Midnight Cowboy is a secret speakeasy spot here in town. Oh, cool. So if you have energy, any of these nights, we'll we'll tell you the secret code to get in. Mm -hmm. cool. Yes. Hi. Oh. Be the glue that bonds all of us. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's see. I'm Delia Grinslet. I'm here from Austin. Uh, as you know, I went through training uh, here in yoga for my 200 hour. I started teaching after that. I wasn't sure whether I was going to be a teacher. I was kind of like, I'm just going to you know, deepen my practice. And then um, I got through it and I realized that some of the things that people had seen in me as a weakness before, my sensitivity to people, was actually like my strength in yoga. And so I was like, I have to do this. And I'm still keeping my corporate job, but who knows how long that's gonna be because my boss just recently told me I need to make sure I have my priorities straight when it comes to yoga. And it was like, oh, well, my, it was like, you're really I do. Exactly, it really made me think like, what are my priorities? And health is, you know, that in yoga and being that health is is a priority in my life and my number one priority because if I'm not healthy and I can't keep my child healthy healthy or you know my husband happy and that. So anyways, um, I started teach I went through the, the training in August as well and I and you know immediately while I was in training just started bringing some of like I was like, okay, I'm just gonna try the roll up and see how people feel with just, you know, using that core line from the feet up and then, you know, pulling up and in and in, in, into, you know, Tadasana. And, and you know, immediately after class with people, that was interesting, you know? <laughs> and it was great to like, okay, you know, I can change this up. And I don't have to do exactly what I was taught or that I've been, you know, as I've been going through my yoga practice that other people see. And I just thought, this is so amazing to be able to do that. Like, I don't have to be stagnant on my mat. My arms aren't here just all the time or here, you know. I can move and it, and that just was like ding, ding, ding. <laughs> you know, like I can, I, this doesn't have, yoga is not like this one look kind of thing. You can you can move it and, and breathe through it and do what feels right for your body. And I constantly am able to just tell that to my to my students, which is amazing. You know, like, hey, you don't have to do forty five degrees. I love saying that to them. You don't have to do forty five degrees with your foot. <laughs> it's like, what? Do what feels good for your hip here, and yeah. you know. Um, so that's been really great, and I've had great responses from my students. People just telling me, "Wow, I felt like I got a quarter, but." it wasn't the like, outer core, like that was inner core. Like, and it was, yeah. it's like, wow, that's so amazing for your students to be able to, to feel that as well, like what you feel in your own body. And so I'm really just hoping to deepen that for myself here and for my students and, and you know, bring that power into their lives as well, you know, because as cool. much as I've felt since I've taken the training. Thank you. That's wonderful. Thanks, everybody. So happy. Yeah. I feel like I got to know all of you better. Thanks for sharing. <laughs> so, Tyler, some, yeah. some people don't know you yet. That's true. That's what I was to say. Um, <laughs> gosh. So, yeah, I'm, I live in Austin, and uh, I've been here for about four or five years. We worked together when I first moved here. And um, just kind of I never, as I said, never got tied in any one particular aspect. I started with Shivananda, which actually is a very classical but very open-minded, I think, style. Um, classical that has 12 postures, but it's also very spiritually focused, and so that was always kind of my inclination. And I just kind of <clears throat> kept going teaching, took bits and pieces here and there from different styles and different things that made sense to me. And I love to just kind of sample a, a wide variety of things. So I had vinyasa, ashtanga, universal style yoga, um, kundalini, here and there. Just took the bits and pieces that made sense. And then, um, again, this kind of thing where like you get on this fake train, or I don't know what it was, like this,
process, and I was getting ready to leave Austin and head off into the unknown. I was going to go somewhere. I was going to go do something. And he's kind of sick of teaching too. I was done with teaching. Like, I don't yeah. know. I like. I was burnt out of that, and, and then we just kind of co we coalesced right in that moment mm -hmm. and started talking about it and agreed that we had very complementary interests and focuses and styles really. And we started to start kind of integrating that. Mm -hmm. and I think it's been really helpful for both of us and we've done that. It's been very inspiring and very co-creative. We've created amazing things in the process. So, yeah. That's um, right. It's it's kind of it's intense, you know, it's intense to have some to have karma or the universe or your path or whatever it is roll you forward at such a pace especially when you meet somebody else who's there to help you do that and i'm there to help him do that it just goes and sometimes it's a lot sometimes you're like wait 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 stop so we went to the desert mm -hmm. last week yeah. and in the desert we got some real clarity around the style and we were able to do something that i've, I've wanted to do for a while but just hadn't had the time to do it which was to um kind of codify and create a language for the style that can be democratic across the board. So like loops and spirals, when you go to a Core Strength Vinyasa Yoga class, let's say someone from her studio comes to your studio, they're going to hear similar languaging as well as your own creative concepts of what that is. It's the same that we've been doing, but it's now called something. So I think it's just nice to have that guideline and then and then around that you know if you even mention it once in a while students will know what that means um i i i needed to do that because we go to all these core strength vinyasa yoga teachers and it's wildly different and it's almost that you have to reinvent the wheel every time and if we go to another class we're like well are they saying like this is so as you think because they're like Pull the navel inward and upward, or lengthen through the inner belly. Or there's so many ways to say stuff. So when we have this kind of um, clarity, I think it's going to make it easier for you to follow yourself through a pose and know what you're what you're doing in what order, and then also to get creative and expressive with that. So. Um, it's yeah, it's got a name, but then you can also like use your. We wanted to voice. also just to clarify what are the movements, what are the directions, and really clarify and distill down to these principles. They're really just basic principles, which then can be moved from. But those principles, I, we found, are the basic qualities of what we feel are the most important aspects of this movement. As we said before, though, this is transitional. So from that movement, from the flowering aspect, you can create anything out of that. But we understand these to be the, the basic movements as we come to understand those and distill down to the essence of what we're doing. So the first and, and um, major handout for the style is this one, which since I forgot to bring them this morning, I didn't get a chance to separate all of them. So I'm gonna let you guys do that. As I pass these around, you're going to take from page 1 to 20, and that's your handout. I have a few done. But it's the Core Strength Vinyasa Yoga Method. This is the Core Strength Vinyasa Yoga Language and Core Concepts, your CSV Bible. This took me a really long time to create. It took us a long time of just like hyper-focusing on stuff, so I hope uh, I'll keep this one for us. But if you would pass this around, and... Um, Apologies and thank you for the separation techniques here. We just take from page one to twenty, and that's that's yours. I, I lost what? I think we have enough. Yeah, I have twenty. I have yeah. twenty. So, so I, these, know, are, I, I, these are pre-done. Is what you're saying? The first five. What's that? These are pre-done. Pre first yeah. five are pre-done. So yeah. Just go ahead and take those, and then pass the rest. I was running to get them here this morning, and the, the wind swooped away a few, and I was like, Tomorrow we'll bring I watched them rolling on down the road. <laughs> Sadie, do you allow me to translate that and come up with you with a French vocabulary for it? Yes, I would love that. Thank you, I would love that. I still have you on my radar for like, Quebec. Yes, I want to come so badly. I, I will come anytime. I love, I'm coming with you. Uh, so, we also have 
this is a link to kind of as we go. Yes. First four pages. Oh, enjoy. Last questions or comments before we kind of run through this? Yes. I'm really excited about what you just said about creating like a common <laughs> language. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's such an Anyasara thing. Yes. One of the great things about that, no, is that you, wherever you go, you can find a home. You know yes. what I mean? Like everywhere I've traveled in the world, if I could drop into a studio, I felt like I had a family there. Yes. And I think it's so nice to have that and then to have like, so when I travel somewhere, to like know that I can find a teacher who teaches. And not go in and like be like silently right. judging them, you know? Yes. <laughs> like, yes. you know, like you said you were this, but you're not teaching right. that. Yeah. 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 I think these, they, these are also really going to help people to understand the principles. So yeah, you have that basic. You know they get it. They right. Know, they understand these seven principles. Yeah. Um, we um, I, of course I resisted doing this too because any anything that's kind of labeling or labeling or yeah, sort of like. You have you have to say this. It, it makes me uncomfortable because I'm very creative. I would never. I don't like people to tell me what to do. However, I I had to realize that it, without this, yeah. it's just wild for you. You've got to reinvent the wheel every single time you teach. You have to like, am I even doing this? And and there is an order to things anatomically. And so to make sure that you're hitting each point because the body is not only building itself from the ground up in order. But also, if you miss any one of these points, the pose doesn't work as well. And you can, you can try these out in your body. So I have front page. Oh, this is good. Um, if you, if all of this whole handout is, um, well, there's more than this, but it's basically distilled down to the part on. And you can thank Tyler for drawing this guy on his phone. <laughs> can I tell you, I had someone send me a student from Wisconsin, yeah. Lauren Blockus, and she's always on all the Zoom stuff. Her student came to me, and after class, she's like, that wasn't anything like what I was taking. I was like, mm. 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 So it, it really does matter. It matters. It and so they thought they were getting one thing, and they got yeah. something that was probably totally different. And um, even though it's it's a kind of new generation style, I think it's very important to do this um, for your sanity and for and for the student experience also. I think also with self doubt of like because it's, I mean I've been following your style of doing this, but when I went to New York, I was like, whoa, this is not at all what I mean. Yeah. Like, and so I very much appreciate some Yeah. Even though I tweak it a little bit, some. Here's, here, I think it's that's just um, personal um, being yeah. sureness about it and not having doubt. And so it's easier to speak it louder and broader and louder and because and, you're so sure about it. Yes. So who's that? If we all start from the same basis and the same firm understanding, yes. you can oh, grow yes. a lot more yeah. and grow yeah. more expressive in your own stuff. I think I told you that when we were eating that or when we were doing one, it was like, I, you know, it was like, I'm, until I own it, I can't own it. Yeah, and, and, it, and it's it. hard without a structure. The thing is, all of yoga and life is a balance of what we would call therasukha. So it's all a balance of, of um, structure and freedom, stability and mobility, right? Contraction and expansion. And we need a structure within which to play. Otherwise, it gets it gets too free, too too um, diffuse. Can you turn to page twelve? Do you have a stapler by any chance? Mm, yes. <laughs> This entire handout and the entire style of Core Strength Vinyasa Yoga can now be distilled into the following. Core Strength Vinyasa Yoga is two core qualities, contracting versus expanding energy. So we can talk in classes about what contracting energy is on many levels, thank you so much, and what expanding energy is. And when we can use the, the concept of contracting and expanding energy in the body, on all levels, um, that languaging is important. Again, you can find other ways to say this, and we have given you some ideas of other ways to say it, but the, the, the idea of contracting and expanding will go over, and you'll see why that's so instrumental. Um, 
three core elements to building every pose, which poses, yeah. So someone spell check this for me, please, because that's the last thing I'm going to be doing. Um, <laughs> three core elements, you, you know this already if you study the style, foundation, core expression, in that order. So the order of things is very important also. So you get two core qualities and three core elements. And then we have what I'm so proud of, the seven core cues. So we have two bookends on either side and five waves in the middle. And they go in order, step, step one through seven. So we have, we have neutralize, we have a grounding wave, we have a Y wave, a pelvic wave, a lumbar wave, an axial wave, and then you refine the pose. And that is the same order in, in every pose. Now each of those neutralized grounding wave stuff can be described a hundred different ways based on how, you, how, you, how your language is. However, if we can use the terms, not every pose, every one, if you can follow yourself up here enough, if you can use the terms enough, people will begin to understand it's, it's a thing. It's not just something you're wildly saying. And to create these poses in now an even more refined way, so when we follow these seven core cues up the body, you don't miss anything. You bring the student's attention to each part of this, which turns into a wave. You can teach it slower or faster, or more in a flow style. Slower would be if you've ever studied with John Friend, or you've ever seen it, have you? <laughs> <laughs> or teachers who are like, okay, spe specificity, like, and here's the first thing, and then the second, and go this, here, here, build it up the body, build it up the body, build it up, express it, express it, be in it, be in it, be in it, and down dog. That's a nice wave up through the body and hold and really express and it should be challenging in some ways for people, mentally, emotionally, physically, and then come out. So they're, they're building and transforming and, and really growing in strength and freedom and energy. You can teach it slower like that or you can teach it these more skillfully through in a flow. And that's that. That's all you have to really remember. And after that, it's up to you to give this life in your own way. Um, if you hate it, don't use it. <laughs> but if other people are using it and students come to your class, it would be helpful if they knew what it was already. And if your students can always have a language in every class, so they're not constantly wondering what you're talking about. Is this the same thing as last class? Or is this a different instruction? Or what are you doing? Now they, now they get to know. I noticed I was doing that in my classes when I was trying to describe it. Yeah. It was from one class to another class I had I got confused myself. Yeah. Yeah, black order. So I've been teaching, and Tyler and I have been teaching this way for a while now, and um, it's really powerful. It's more powerful than it was before, because we have it. We have our own direction, and people can follow it. We don't say now Y wave. We would never say that, but we use the term Y wave. We use the term pelvic wave, and then we describe what to do. So, so now we're going to take the pelvic wave and and do this, and the lumbar wave, blah, 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 axial, now lift up and out. And so we're, we're generating the terms, but also the description. That's the most important thing, is you understand what, they, what is the essence of what you're saying, why you're saying it, why is it important. So you'll get, we'll, get to, we'll get to that as we go. So this is like our hint word of what? Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah, it's a, it's a guiding language for you. Okay. Can you go through a little more specifically? Yes. Yeah, so, so Tyler and I's portion of this training will be taking, oh, taking you through, right. taking you through one of the cues in in order every session. This one is this one is our welcome and our orientation. We're going to go through this with you and just kind of lightly touch on things, get your questions, and then we'll teach the class uh, focusing on. Teaching, teaching through these in order to see how it feels for your body. We are learning and deepening the language as we speak now. So, for you know, it's going to be way more kind of solid in, in a few months. So bear with us. But you're, you're right at the ground floor. Of Thank this. God. Yeah. So we have more time. <laughs> yeah. And then the next, and then the next sessions will be we'll focus on neutralize what it means, how you how you put it into language, how you put it into pose, and like a deeper why and how. The next class will be about the grounding wave and so on. So let's just go through this. Um, I've made I've made red the most important concepts. 
So the art of core strength vinyasa yoga is both a an ability to not just run people smoothly through through a never-ending flow. You can if you want, but I find I find it's powerful to sometimes also stop, slow it down, break it down, so they can really see the difference in the poses instead of just flowing it through. Because if you if you only flow, you don't get as deep. If you for me, if you only stay more static and kind of break down poses, um, it gets to be too intense. The style can be very confrontational or, or very powerful, I guess, and it's not my preference to have you guys piece and part out everything. It gets people into the left brain. It, it brings them into more of a head space than a feeling space, and we like to have a balance of both. You can ask yourself what that looks like for you. We're always inventing that ourselves from day to day. Uh, so the cues, which is nice, you can you can stop and dive into each one of them and build them on, on top of one another, or you can use less languaging and just flow through. And you do not, in a flow moment, have to always say, like, rounding wave this, why wave this? It'll take too long. So you do three of them and, you know, flow them into plank pose. I'll give you the option, though, of breaking it down if you want to, which you will need to, especially with, for quite a long time, you're gonna have people who've never experienced this before. And so it's really good to be able to break down certain concepts in a class, I'd say at least two or three times. Maybe you say, okay, now we're gonna figure out what we're doing here, then we're gonna flow it. Why? Because that's the essence of what we're doing. This is a transitional practice. Transitional means movement, it's flow. And you see that in our, uh, in these seven cues, they're about flow, they're about waves. This is the waves, it is the essence of, of our body. It's the understanding, which we've come to, to understanding what is the essence here, what are we dealing with? Well, we're dealing essentially with, it's the tensegrity of a bag of salt water held together by calcium deposits. That movement is waves. That's the way that we move. We, we're, we're fluctuating with the tensegrity of our body. And these are the principles. Um, it, it would be, it's my preference as the teacher that I am to begin the class with the breath, as we do, move into a floor core warm up, and, and that's not really a place where you can apply the seven cues as much. You can touch on certain things because you're on the pelvis, you're on the ground, and you're doing, and you're doing some of the warm up stuff. So I prefer to start them just to, just to slough off the mental com compression, contraction of the day or whatever, and get them into the belly, get them into the breath. And then as we move through the slower vinyasa, like the one slower vinyasa, we have a template, um, which I'll get, I'll get to you, the, the people who haven't been here before. So we've got a teaching template. It's a, a template sequence. It's not a set sequence at all. It's just something to kind of show you how a class could look and how we would normally order our class. So when you're doing the slower vinyasa flow at first, for me is the time to really kind of build each pose and take them up through the deep core line and explain what you're doing and use the seven cues more and just get them into this idea of the alignment principles and then perhaps begin to flow a little bit more after that into some of the stuff and then here and there in the practice itself as you go intersperse with some longer held moments of really coming back to that slow build and then go back to a flow so it's it's this nice pulsation we get all right, page two. So the two core qualities, we could have called them any, we could have called them stereosuko, we could have called them stability and mobility, we could have called them a lot of things, but I like this idea of contraction and expansion. Contraction as in muscular action, as in hugging a muscle into the bone, as in drawing uh, bones closer together, as in using a more activated energy to, to provide a little bit of support. Contraction drawing in, um, into the process of coming from, core, or from periphery to core. For me, this, this idea of contracting energy is what we do during cues one to five, maybe two to five, because neutralizing is softening, it's, it's, it's releasing. 
It is an inward drawing in a way, so it's more of a mental contraction, a physical expansion, if that makes sense. You're letting go, you're drawing in, you're, you're just, you're getting really present. But really generally, the contracting energy you're gonna find during the foundational and the core cues. Two to five, definitely. So as you're building and hugging in and activating and drawing from the grounding wave, from pressing your foundation down all the way up to this kind of idea of the core of your core of the pelvis, and we'll go through all this, don't worry about it. That's that contractile energy. After that, you begin to move into the expanding energy, the second core quality. The expanding energy is really the expression. The axial wave is expanding energy away from the core, softening some overused muscles. Joints would create a little bit more space, therefore you're lengthening, you're expressing the pose that has a lighter quality. The last Q7 is refining, so it's going to, whatever you need to do, you feel to balance the pose, and that could be contraction and expansion. Are you too contracted, are you too hugged in, are you gripping? Are you too over expansive so that you're losing your foundation or your core alignment? What's going on? And so those, that refinement moment is for both. And mentioning contracting energy and expanding energy throughout the practice and words that also exemplify that um, will, I think, be helpful for the student to balance that in their own bodies. So that balance of strength and ease, the balance of um, stability and movement. But the language is this, um, and you can read more about it in your handout as we go. So page three, the seven core cues. You have anything? Yeah. Um, so these are the sequential steps that we've come to understand as the essence of the flow, of the order that we go through. Um, understanding these, these are the basic template. Those are what we're going to focus on. Those are what we're going to root, really root into the equation. Because we found that these seven can identify basically the posture in the transition in the full formation. So they are neutralized, number one, rounding wave, Y wave, pelvic wave, lumbar wave, axial wave, and refine. Um, with enemy class, we understand that these principles can be applied to any body. Almost essentially, this is the adaptation principle, that no two bodies are the same. And this, I think, really unique here, is we're not telling you this is what the body's supposed to do. We're not saying you're supposed to feel it this way. You're not supposed to feel it, you're supposed to feel it in this place. Otherwise, you're doing it wrong. This is not the idea. The principle we're understanding is that every body has a different shape and formation. But if you follow these waves or movements, you can achieve the maximum potential for your body for each posture. At this time. Mm -hmm. um, I really, um, I like this, this reminder that this is their yoga, not yours. Although you're teaching yoga as you understand it from your own personal practice, ultimately, and you're kind of teaching in the way that you would move, like Marietta, you, you probably are going to be more comfortable talking about the back bending. And it's easy if you have a, a, a really nice lumbar curve, very deep curve like Tyler and you, to not that you do it, but it's easy to default towards thinking it's easy for people or just being like, and now really open, offer. And. Or that they should do that. All or the that time. they could. Right. Yeah. Even. Um, and to respect that you're not teaching your body to other people. You are teaching from what you know, but then you're offering this as their practice, as their opportunity to be in their body shape in the way that is most supportive, but also more free and open. And that's that's really important. I was just at a teacher's workshop uh, last, last week, in the last few days, and I found it a horrifying example. And I love taking other people's classes. And any teacher teaches me something, I am very open to that. But I, it was shocking to see the amount of, um, what would you call it? Just say it. Point of perspective. <laughs> <laughs> you know me so well. Um, 
the lack of empathy, the lack of sensitivity to who was actually in the room. These teachers were teaching to their body shape as if it was everyone's. No questions asked. No adaptation. And the implication was if you're not, if this doesn't feel good to you, then there's something wrong. Yeah, and if, the, if it doesn't feel good to you, then you just need to do it more. <laughs> when it was extraordinarily back body oriented and arched in the lumbar and compressive. We just, it, it's it not based in the anatomy. It's not based like, I think this is very much so in the anatomical reality of the variety of bodies out there. It's such a huge variety, which needs to be really acknowledged. And I left feeling kind of, I mean, I was interested in what happened. I took some things from it, but I felt kind of violated. I felt not seen, not spoken to, because my lumbar is not that. It's the anti-that. And for people like me, and there's a lot of people who either have low back pain or don't, or, or have defaulted into their curve, because even if you do have a, 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 a large amount of lordosis in your lumbar, you can easily dump into that, because it's, it's easy to do. So it's not, Either population, which is most people, needs to be spoken to. Now, if, if you're feeling pain here or if your curve isn't that deep, here's what to do. Instead of, like, I won't even do the movement or you'll know who it is, but I just want you to really start from the ground up knowing that although these are guidelines, offer them the permission. They need it from you often. Offer your students the permission to be in their body, in their practice. I think this is what's missing largely. Huge, I don't know if it just fell away or what, but due to the indoctrination and the uh, absolutism of so many yoga styles, we've lost the part of the experimentation of understanding your own body, which is what it's really about. It's, this is a chance for you to explore and understand what you can do, what's possible. I am not gonna tell you what that is, it's up to you. And when we come to our students with that and give them the space to explore their own experience, they're going to be so much happier and so much more rewarded in the process. Using these cues each time even helped me, and I think Tyler too, be more specific and deepen this practice into people's bodies and into my own. It's different when you do this in order than if you just try to remember stuff. If you're like, press the feet down, lift the inner thighs up and out. Oh, or you know, lift up the front of the spine. And, and the things that we were saying, I, I think, can I show it in your body? Can you, um, before you drink that, can you take a forward fold? So there's a couple ways we can say this. And, and necessarily, if you're gonna flow faster, you want to just, I don't think you have to skip things, but you can say it more quickly and people therefore won't will skip in the body. They're not going to do everything that you're saying if, if you're flowing through your vinyasa. And that's okay. And you don't always have, you don't have to be anal attentive about this. But you'll like it if we do. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll eat it up and highlight it with two colors. <laughs> that's a compliment, actually. You should see her notes are like stunning. Can you just hold up your book and show us? Yeah. That's just one page. The other page will be red and like, I don't know. I like, color coded it by different sections of the training last time. That's amazing. Neuroses, <laughs> That's good. But um, specificity really matters because I just am curious and I don't, he's not going to sell it to you. He's just going to tell us his authentic experience right now. So um, bend the knees, take a deep breath in. Exhale, press down through the feet, roll up through the belly the front spine, and then unfurl the arms, bend those elbows, unfurl the arms, stretch up, inhale, fill the pose, and just feel your experience of that, okay? That's, because that's like kind of quickly through some main points, but not all the points. Hands to your heart at Namaste. Very therapeutic roll up, it was refreshing. I mean, we went to Leslie Kamenoff's workshop this weekend, which is not the one I was talking about, and <laughs> It was so great to see how he moved up into poses and to hear the why, and we, we've included some of that information in here just as as a as a reasoning. Um, so let's do it again, but go through the we'll go through the seven. It's so fun around the ground floor together. I have to literally read some of these sometimes. Okay, so we're going to neutralize first, so that that would include butterasana, which means to soften your body from the outside to the inside, as in as Tyler said last night, beautiful. 
um, uh, a stick of melted butter. A stick of butter in the oven. In the oven. When you put it in the oven, you know how it melts. It gets soft on the outside first, and it gets softly melt away, and then the inside is, you know, from the outside in. We're going to be talking more about neutralize today, the first step. So the neutralization, um, butter asana is just a general quality of softening at any moment in any post. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna take them into and you can of course you can just say soft and you have to say butter asana no but if someone else is saying butter asana and they come to your class and you say it they'll no it you know, makes them smile and it's yeah. funny it's yeah, fun it's, and it lightens up a very intensive practice it's also people. it's very illustrative it's very most people don't understand oh I'm not just softening my hip and my ankle and my shoulder mm -hmm. I'm softening every like butter butter doesn't have any restriction where it's softening. We do this, we do, okay, so I'm just gonna take you through and then we can talk about it and see if yeah. you have any questions. So, so just soften, so we'll, we'll neutralize the body first, bring it back to as much of a center, as much of a harmonious place, a soft place as we can, so we can rebuild it and recruit that deep core line without the outer body getting in the way. Soften your head, soften your neck, even sway side to side if you want, like, move it. Yeah, just move it, it's move it out. All right, bend the knees a little bit more. And as you press down through the three bony points of the foot, ball, the big toe, ball, the pinky toe, and center of the heel, uh, we're going to begin to create this grounding way of moving from the pelvis down the long lines of the legs into the bony points of the feet. So feel that grounding way of really help you plant and root your feet down deeply. From there, we're going to begin to lift up through that Y wave, moving from the arches of your feet. So as the bony points of your feet press down, the soft tissue starting with the arches get to respond up from the earth. Let the inner arches of the feet really lift. Draw up to the center of your lower leg, back the shin there, really lifting. Good, and then continue that Y up, the inner thighs. So pull, this idea of pulling and lifting, integrating from inner knee to inner groins, Draw the pubis back and widen both sitting bones like a Y. There you go. Take a deep breath in here. Continue that as you move into the pelvic wave. So draw the front of the sacrum up, the front top of the pelvis up, front lumbar as you begin to roll up. Keep the Y wave happening and keep your legs really grounded down. As you begin to lift in and up and stack up over that pelvis, Create that lumbar wave, so sweep the back of the sacrum in and up, the lumbar in and up, and between pelvic and lumbar, you lift the spine, axial wave, as you lift up to the crown of the head, bend those elbows and start to express, not just through the spine, but back down through the long lines of the legs, out through the long lines of the arms. Keep the arms as soft as you want. Spine is lengthened here. Good, take a deep breath in, and exhale, bring the hands to the heart at Namaste. That's a fucking style. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that is instruction. That can, doesn't always have to be that slower broken down. That is just to help people really understand their inner body more. How did that feel? It's fucking awesome. From the first <laughs> to the second. Um, the first, I was like, yeah, okay, oh yeah, I remember this. Yeah. And it was like very general. The second was so deep. I feel like I did, just did like 15 minutes of yoga just from that. So it's refined, not expressed. Refining is when a refine is then after you're done with the axial wave, which okay. I'm going to talk more about. Okay. Um, you're going to then have a chance to say, and af so after the waves is the time, the refinement is the time to kind of let them rock out the pose. Full expression, full grounding, go back up through the waves really quickly if you want to. You know, keep those legs grounded, lift up and out through the sit bones, make sure those. those Hip creases are, are, are not hard or softening back enough. Really lift up through the spine, open up. Express, express, express. Be in your mountain, feel it, feel it. Raha, woo, cheerleader, and you're down. Downward facing dog or forward fold. That kind of building up the mountain, like, uh, they should feel like, oh my God, it's an intensity of energy or a physical sensation or, or stretch sensation to, to not a crazy point, but just like this. This fullness, this fullness, wah, 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 and then, and then give them a neutralizing moment again. Take them back down into a place where they can rest, where they can, they cannot always be in that moment. So it's like you're building up to a peak moment. Yeah, yeah it's like you're riding. That's that's the wave. Yeah, it's the wave of a class. It's the wave of a class. And so you're doing that like at the beginning, and then you. You like it, you know, you don't talk so you, you, yeah, and then I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that in every pose in every class. Like, okay, yeah, yeah, I mean, yes, 
But even so, it's a it's a wonderful experience to be in a pose that deeply. You are lighting up their myofascial meridian on the inside as well as on the outside. They're going to get more energy. They're going to get more communication, more lymph flow, more circulation, um, less joint compression. I mean, you want healthy joint compression, but less over compression. Um, everything feels knit together and it's communicating. And it's like he said, and he's not just saying that. Um, He's very pragmatic. He, he will tell you the I truth. I felt in my body, I could, because of the specificity, I could feel what I was doing far more specifically, and I could really integrate it more effectively. So I felt like I was really experiencing the core body more directly, which is a difficult thing to do because the core body is so deep. But by using these cues, I feel like I really could get in there and understand the principle and the balance of what was happening. And don't, don't be afraid to hold them in these poses for longer than you are maybe comfortable doing, especially if you're a flow teacher or kind of um, trained to like link a whole bunch of poses together and woohoo, I'm not you guys, but we being a generalized concept. Um, it's associated with vinyasa. It's associated with vinyasa flow. Rachel, I saw you nodding. Do you have experience with that? I mean, you're an, you're an anatomist. And, what what is it? What is it to build a pose like that versus always just flowing and exiting a posture pretty quickly? Um, I think it's you know how if you see a picture of yourself, you're surprised by what you see sometimes. Mm -hmm. I think it's the same concept where if you move rapidly from pose to pose, you feel the same thing each time. Yeah. So a lot of people are really hypermobile never have the experience of their hypermobility as potentially a drawback and a lot of people who are you know as like the language here would be like outer body users mm -hmm. never feel the other way because they never stop yeah. So, yeah yeah so I'd love to try that with with your bodies if for any reason you don't feel like this, you want to move and you're want to take notes <laughs> I'm a note taker but experientially it's better so why don't um, just come to stand where you are kind of right now. Let's try to let's try the two different ways. And then I'll teach it and, and then Tyler could teach it so you can hear different ways of languaging. So separate your feet comfortably. So you feel like your center of gravity has support. The pelvic center of gravity. Um, just kind of Maybe, maybe your leg bones aren't shaped so your feet are comfortable being parallel. It could torque the knees a little bit. So maybe just lift one foot and then the other just put it down naturally just for right now. See where it goes. And let that be good. Um, take a deep breath in here. And on your exhale, bend your knees and just gently roll. Now, if you, if you roll like this and pause, feel how you're kind of hanging out in the back body. Um, you, may, you may find it more therapeutic, more supportive to roll down along that front body line and let the back body, the back spinal ligament kind of get a nice stretch of breath. Stretch for a ligament, of course, being just more of a stimulation than a stretch. So bend your knees a lot and take that first neutralizing moment. So to neutralize is to soften, butter asana, like a stick of butter melting in the oven. Let your whole body, as much as you can, just drape and drip over the bones and give yourself this moment of clarity, of clearing away, of blank slating it. Even wave from side to side if you want to or pick up a foot, move it, do something. It feels like you can really release some old tension. Very bent knees now so we can access the inner body track in a moment and use the earth to our advantage. Begin to breathe deeply now through the nose, perhaps feeling the belly fill up more on the inhale and on the exhale, giving a light squeeze from the pelvic muscles upward, low belly, helping that breath press out, not too hard. Bend your knees even more from this neutral space and begin to press down as you breathe from the pelvis, from the core of your pelvis, press down through the legs into the three bony points of the feet, ball of the big toe, ball of the little toe and center of the heel, get even on those points. Think of these waves of, of, of press, of grounded and rooted energy pressing from the pelvis down through the legs into the bony points of the feet. Keep the knees bent. 
From there, you get a reciprocal lift and Y wave upward as the inner arches, the soft tissue starts to lift. The soft tissue of the arches lift. The center of your shins lift up. The inner thighs begin to track upward, integrating the legs. Drop the pubis back a little bit and widen both sitting bones up and out like a Y shape. Good. Keep the knees bent. <laughs> Is it getting harder? Mm -hmm. Alright. Let the whole, let the neck relax. Keep that Bhadrasana in the upper body. There you go. Alright, so from that grounding wave from the pelvis, pressing down through the feet, way down. Lift the inner arches. Lift the inner thighs up and out the sitting bones. Descend the groins back. Descend the pubis back. One more deep breath in here. Keep all of that, but on the exhale, press down through the feet and begin to lift up along the front of your sacrum, the front of the lumbar spine as you begin to roll yourself upward. Very good. Keep pressing the feet and lifting the inner thighs back and up. As the pelvis stacks, you're going to begin to sweep the back of the sacrum and lumbar inward and upward as well to help balance and lift the lumbar into that axial wave. Actually lifting the spine upward through the crown as you come up from that, bend the elbows as the motion hits the chest, draw the shoulders back and down and express the arms softly, so not hard. The axial wave now moving from the pelvis through the spine and crown, through the arms, lifting and lightening them, then down through the legs as well. So you stay grounded to the earth and long and spacious in the joints. Take a deep breath here. Reach in all directions. Rock it out. Good. Exhale. Bend the knees and fold all the way back down. Very nice. Inhale. Bend the knees. Exhale. Press the feet. Roll up through the belly. Inhale. Bend the elbows and stretch up to the sky. Feel the quality of both experiences. Not that one is bad and one is good. It's just they're enhanced your heart at Namaste. Do you see how you miss a depth? Perhaps, perhaps not. And if you can sometimes take, it's fine, because sometimes you don't want depth every second. How was, uh, how was the first roll? <laughs> awesome. Yeah. <laughs> cool. did, you, did you find places where you're, where you're not used to tracking that deeply? Like, oh, I could do this, I could do, oh, I, I usually don't keep the thighs back when I'm rolling up that mm -hmm. much, or? The front sacrum is a really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So thinking about like, the front of your lumbar, you're like, oh my God, yeah. Yeah. so deep. And I love that. It gets people to think deeper than just pull your belly in or what did you arch say up through the back body. About sweeping the lumbar. Sweep the back sacrum and lumbar inward and upward as well as yeah. the front sacrum and lumbar inward and upward. That causes like a toothpaste tube squeezing. It causes our axial length. Speaking to directly to the core body. Yeah, that yeah. language, thing about sweeping it, just helped me feel that really deeply. That was a core roll up for sure. Yeah. yeah. That was a solid following. So you're not missing any part of the line um, just for sake of, of moving faster? You know what I mean? And I feel like it was really, as much as you were lifted and expressive, you were still super grounded. So the idea of, you know, moving in the opposite directions and getting that full extension through the body yes. really happened. Yes. So the axial wave is not just the, the idea of axial extension, which would be decreasing the curvature of the spine. For me, not, you never want to have, why would you want a straight spine? That would be horrifying. Um, you'd never walk again, probably. So you want to decrease the curves until they are in their healthy space, but also their healthy stability. So what we're doing is we're not crunching and crushing the biggest like psoas action humanly possible, and then we're arching up through the back. It's not an aggressive thing, obviously, but to really get this lift up. So axial extension is lifting up through the plumb line of the spine through the crown of the head, but also axially through the plumb central lines, longitudinal long lines of the bones themselves, arms and legs. So now we've got this length up, yes, but also out through the arms and back down through the legs from the core of the pelvis. Mm -hmm. That well, This is making a difference. Pressing. You said from the pelvis down to the feet, which Sometimes it might sound confusing, but it felt not confusing. Mm -hmm. What was the language? Again? That's the grounding wave. It goes from the core of the pelvis down through the foundational points, whatever they, if the feet are down, you'll see it switches a little bit if you're doing an arm balance. Then, then we're cueing it more through the, the, um, the pectoral muscles this, and kind of the, um, the center of the shoulders and the chest down through the arms. It changes depending on what's on the ground because there isn't... What? Is that in there? It's all in here. We wrote yeah, this all fucking down. We're about to show you 
uh, specifically what we're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. So here's just a different language. For I'll just stop you if you say, I don't know how different it's going to be, but you know, so. I just had a flash because I've done that in another context. Um, lately, I've been talking a lot to my students about the, I call them the second ab set, which mm -hmm. are the NFIs. I find them to be very like working synergically. And I've done that once, wearing black ties and drawing with a uh, chalk certain points. And I think I'm going to use that to yeah, direct yeah. them because awesome. they don't see it and uh -huh. you lift up from there. Yes. I love it. So if you want to experiment, I'll still figure out the drawing. Great. Or? My yes. sister actually teaches anatomy and she does oh, they that, do that with that a lot. Yeah. So okay. I actually oh, draw exactly. muscles on the bone. That's really cool. Yeah. Oh, Very nice. nice. We, we don't have, the pelvic diaphragm and floor is not instructed as much during these waves, but you have then the core breath that we will add, the, the, the full bandha breath that we teach you. We'll kind of expound yeah. on that this session too. So by the nature of how you're breathing in each pose, you recruit the pelvic floor and diaphragm. And also. what we're speaking to right now is just more the, the musculature, but when you bring in the breath, that's when you really create the flow. The breath itself maximizes the flow. And we have a whole session with you on this. So let's go ahead and bend your knees. Yay. And so just take your time. Now, there are two different ways. Yeah, you can also, like I like to just let my body unfurl by sticking butt back, coming up the different ways. You can also just curl it down like belt butter. Either way, just feel what feels right for you. Come to the floor and in this moment, the butter asana is warming your outer body so that you soften everything. Your outer body begins to release and you come into that basic inner focus. You feel now those three points on both feet and grounding evenly through your points but keeping your feet relaxed. Just feel that you spread that weight evenly across again like butter melting through your feet. Now knees bend a little more taking a deep breath here from this neutral position. Start to softly press down through those points. Feel your arches lift and feel the inner muscles of your thighs begin to invigorate and, and come up pressing along. So as you press down, you're gonna feel the energy draw back and up, along, up through your inner thighs and then feel the pubis back, sits bones widen. Feel those sit bones widening. Continue to focus effort there on that sensation. So the grounding wave is pushing down, drawing up along the Y wave out through sits bones. Then as you continue to press down through your pelvic wave, begin to softly lift up. But don't lose those sits bones wide. Try to really feel like your sits bones are grounded in space as you begin to roll up from the pelvis. Stay lined up over your foundation directly. As you then continue rolling up, feel the lumbar wave add in, neutralizing, lifting, and actually extending up along your spine. Elbows will bend. Then we begin to unfurl, fill up, and stretch. Now begin to lengthen and open and refine the pose from ground to fingertips. Feel the full expression, the full openness. Reach up a little higher. Get full stretching, lengthening. Then when you're ready, knees bend. Palms come full all the way down. Relax. Cool. Cool. It's so interesting how different teachers can help you feel different qualities. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like when you taught it, I felt a very kind of watery, like uh -huh. fluid way up. And yeah. then with you, I felt really grounded from the inside. I know you're like earth major right. yeah. <laughs> element, but... It was just, I felt the strength of it as opposed to the fluidity of it. It's yeah. Cool. That's cool. Really cool. Yeah. And this is the thing, you have a similar template now to use, and, and I don't think it takes away from your individuality. I think it adds to it. Because now you don't have to constantly wonder what you're going to say next. And, but, so you have, that, you have that clarity that your students can understand, but then you put in, you infuse it with who you are. So you'll see that he, he's him, and you get a different experience from him than you do with me, but you're still tracking them up the inner body and making sure you hit those alignment points that are going to ensure that you don't do things like, um, let's, let's do it again, but skip, let's skip around a little bit. Let's skip some stuff. So come on to your forward bend. Um, I'm gonna skip the Y wave this time. So neutralize, soften your body. I, I, I will not go all into it this time. Bend the knees, take a deep breath in. On the exhale from the pelvis, press down to the bony points of your feet and begin to roll up through your pelvis. Top pelvis, front pelvis, as is, front sacrum. Drop to the front of the lumbar. Good, get the lumbar involved. Reach the lumbar in, run it upward, and then exhale, extend through the spine and lengthen through the bones. Do you 
sense a difference. Less power. Yeah. Right? It's, it's like there's such power that you access mm -hmm. through the inner thighs and the six bones. Uh, she said what I feel too is that I feel empty from here to here. I feel like short here. I feel short and I, and I actually noticed a, a more of a compression mm -hmm. and a hardening in the groins here. Uh, I was taking a teacher's class yesterday and she wasn't teaching the style but I was still trying to, for your sakes and mine, go up through each wave and just remember it in the body. And I noticed that in the instruction I, if, I don't, if I don't do each one, I don't, usually for me it's the Y wave, it doesn't happen in these poses as much as, at all. And then I come up from kind of the groins pushed forward and the, and the femurs pushed out. And even though, even though I'm, I can bend the knee all I want and roll up through some of that pelvic action, I'm, I'm, pu I'm pushed out and forward and I'm still pushed here. If I do, look at all the space you can make by integrating, and then you can drop over that. It's a completely different experience for me, and, and much more healthy for my joints. It's, it's sort of like landmarks in, on a journey, and if you miss a spot, you're not going to feel entirely sure you're on the right path necessarily. I mean, I think this is going to allow us to have these landmarks in our body so that we can check in as we move up to have that deeper integration. Fold forward again. Let's try it. Let's try a couple of other ways. It's going to be very weird. Okay, soften out completely, wave around, come into the breath. Um, lift your inner thighs up and out through the sitting bones, deep in the groins. Okay, and on the exhale, lift up the front sacrum, front spine. So I totally skip the grounding wave. Where are my feet? Right? <laughs> Roll yourself in and up, lumbar inward and upward, lengthen through the spine, and furl. Do you feel like. I just feel. I feel like I'm on eye like wheels trying to do that. It's, <laughs> it's so hard actually not to do it. I think. I know. I'm like, don't. Like, yeah. really? Because your students will do what you say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They won't even do this so that you all know how to do this right. way more fully than your students. It's going to take them time. So do exactly what I say because they will. Fold it forward. Okay, soften yourself. Take a deep breath in. On your exhale from the pelvis, waving length down through the bony points of the feet, press down. Lift the upper inner thighs up and out through the sitting bones. Lengthen in and up through the back of the sacrum and come on up into your mountain pose. Lumbar inward and upward. Lengthen up through the chest and just arms. Can you do your monkey? That was good. Oh, that's so awesome. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I know. Twerk it, twerk it, twerk it. <laughs> um, uh, and then let's try, let's try maybe uh, one more. So roll it down to the ground. I just think it's interesting because when we skip it, it matters. Um, bend and soften. Let your spine really hang. Let the ten-ish pounds of your head lengthen the spine even more. Give yourself some light traction here. Take a breath in. Bend the knees more. And on your exhale, grounding wave from the pelvis down to the feet. Really press them down. Y wave. Lift up through the arches. Keep breathing. Lift up through the arches, through the inner thighs, up and out the sitting bones. Take a deep breath in. On your exhale, press the feet down more. Roll up through the front of the sacrum, the front of the spine. Drawing inward. Reach your arms up. I skip two things. I'm just skipping. I'm skipping everything. I don't care. I so I skip lumbar, which is opening an offering, and then I skip axial, which is lengthening you from that. So if you stop at any point there without the axial expansion and length through the bones, through the spine and joints, uh, you're going to end up just crushing them with that contractive energy. It's too. It's too. And it's not like they won't figure it out because they probably might will or they might not. You don't know, but that's the teacher. You give them the option, like these are the points and we can go all the way through. This Isn't it amazing the difference with um, someone that, I mean myself with disc stuff? Yeah. Um, you know, you think, I used to think, oh, it's gonna hurt your disc going down. No, it's the coming up part that will fire your, you know that, but, um, I, but I didn't really know that until I hurt myself. But now with everything and really all thinking, I don't have that anymore. Yeah. But you know, when you come from this world, 
I'm just pissing them off more and yeah. more and more. Most of us come is, from that world. This is really changing, though, and I want to share that. So if you have somebody that comes in and says mm -hmm. they're back, and this can so get them to get into that yes. process. Yeah. So it's and, so important. And so I wanted you to see how um, really important cool. it is because I was thinking so much, and Tyler and I both were, were thinking this, like it's not effective to skip yeah. any step along the way. So how do we make sure that you remember each step in a way that isn't just so fluid? It also keeps them, um, gets them out of their head. I find, because mine are all new students. I mean, yeah. new students, so it's very hard for them to get centered and get into it and know what yogi is. And they ask, like, I've done a few classes where I like, didn't talk so much because like, I think I really think that's yeah. what and I'll stop and they're like, mm, where's our movie? Like, you know, they're yes. lost and they start thinking and then they get all messed up. And so when I continue, giving that continuous speed, it, it, it keeps you in your body, don't you mm -hmm. think? Mm -hmm. yeah. I think so. I think it keeps you from feeling like you don't know where you stand. Like, well, so your language means that. What are you saying? What are you saying to do? Um, the ways we were trying to actually describe what you're actually doing when naming these waves more or less, at least bringing their attention to a certain area of the body. And so I, I'm glad that was powerful for you to see that it makes a huge difference when you skip something um, in the body. And then to refine it in your own way and decide like how exactly you want to language this. We've given you some ideas, but you have this, you have the structure. Um, so the seven core cues are really a, a further breakdown of the three core elements which are foundation how you build every pose generally is foundation something core something center of your body or, or, or um, pelvis to lumbar area is what I consider the core of your core and then expression whatever is lighter above that whatever the pose is you've created something to fly get lighter be the be the sukha be this the more kind of free aspect of the pose so building stuff from the ground up all the time foundation core expression yes have you, um, just because it was mentioned about discompression, have you responded to any of the like blogs and stuff that are coming out about how spinal rolling is yeah. actually negative for anterior discomfort? Yeah, it's, it, it's not, uh, well, I mean, do you have any opinion about that? Um, it's, from what I can see of the way that you're doing it, you have people's knees bent. Yeah. So, Two comments on that. One, people's knees are bent. That is huge. Mm -hmm. If their legs are straight, yeah, then yes. Mm -hmm. Two, it also depends on the level of tone in the rest of the body and the weight of the upper body. Yeah. yeah. And so that's an individualized mm -hmm. thing. So if you have a male student who is really broad and low tone, yeah. then then <coughs> dangling themselves over in yeah. a more straight leg position is really not for the spine at all. Mm -hmm. um, but with all the cues you're giving, it shouldn't end up that way. It's all about the level of load you're putting on it. And I think yeah. that would be more, you know, um, even though, you know, women have might have more breast tissue, you're still, that doesn't weigh nearly as much as all the muscle tone that most men are going to have up top. Yeah. And most men have a flatter lumbar curve, mm -hmm. so it gets a little iffy without them bending their knees. Yeah. I think it's important. What you said is huge. That like when we're talking about it in isolation, then you're dealing with, yeah, that should be really dangerous. Like straight, and I'm using all my back muscle to crank up my back, and by pulling down, my legs aren't helping at all. But if you'll notice, as you just did, this is a leg pose. We're starting from the legs. The legs are creating the rounding up. And without the leg strength, without super strong legs, you won't be able to, it's, it's much more difficult. So it builds that strength first, which is the kind of the basis and support for all the movement. And so beyond bending of the knees, which helps you stay over your center of gravity and, and, use, and use the legs to help you um, and not create this huge, insane inability to um, recruit any other line but the superficial back line to get up there. A lot of people thinking of a roll up, they think of rolling up using the back muscles. That's very, very different than what we're doing here. So you have people, a lot of, a lot of straight legs because the chairs are cueing like fold straight legs, fold forward, right? Even if they say, "Well, bend your knees a little bit," we're still we're, what we're doing is rolling up by it's it's not a it's it's different to roll up thinking about pushing this towards the sky as it is rolling up using your leg muscles, deepening the femurs into place, and then rolling up using the front 
of the sacrum, front, spine, pelvic areas it's really the as between using outer body versus core. Totally no pressure for me out here, whereas this thing sucks. And it seems like a no Or this, God forbid, you know? Like, like it's better to do that, it's not. I'm surprised by some of the people who are writing the blogs coming from like many yoga therapy backgrounds, for example, and not recognizing that and seeing how mm -hmm. just a change mm -hmm. to the lower body and exactly. more engagement yeah. can create a safe yeah. Well, transition. there are people, you know, that's a kind of, um, if somebody's back is so hurt that they can't roll up with alignment like this, they definitely shouldn't be in a vinyasa yoga class, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. And they reach down and tie their shoes and do all sorts of stuff all day long, probably with less support than you do, so I wouldn't worry so much about that. Also, we were just in Leslie's training, and so I'll be referring to it here and there. And he was talking about the therapeutic benefits of rolling up, but it depends on from where and how. Of course, he, he rolls up the same way and he always as we're doing here, and he's always taught that. That's how he got your back to stop hurting. You know, so it's actually, if you do it in a therapeutic modality like this with consciousness, you can shore up and create less spinal pain rather than the danger of more most of the time. That's that's the best we can do. I ask those people, well, what are you gonna do in yoga then? What's your, what's your alternative? How are you gonna get up there? Yeah. You're rolling, you gotta get down to the ground and back up again, so how are you gonna do it? I think it's a, like there's, that. there's a concept called fear avoidant behavior. Yeah, that's the, sci yeah. That's the scientific term, uh -huh. fear avoidant behavior. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. when you have a back yeah. injury, everything mm -hmm. that you see that looks like that makes you nervous mm -hmm. about oh, how that's you're going to experience pain. Yep. Yeah. Um, and so if you see it without feeling the legs and having your knees bent, mm -hmm. then there's already, you're already processing the experience that it's going to be painful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, that creates the pain right there. I think too when we just did all those exercises, one of the biggies for me wasn't so much the muscle tone protecting mm -hmm. my back, but the blood pressure change. Yep. Because mm -hmm. if you don't engage your legs and then engage all the way through the upper body, when yep. you do that, that facilitates the, the quicker change in your blood pressure. Yes. Be, but you know, like a lot of us being female are knee lockers. Uh huh. Or like one knee, you know, one yeah. hip. Um, and so then you get. When you stand up, you feel dizzy, or yes. because you have low tone in the legs when you stand up. So when you do the grounding wave and you press through your feet, yeah. then when you get up, you're not going to feel like you're going to fall over nearly yes. as much as if you don't do it. Yeah, we do hear that a lot. Um, we're adding in an exhale usually in this practice, an exhale and toning and lifting the pelvic floor and diaphragm and low belly also, which helps kind of contain and keep your blood pressure more stabilized. So people get way less dizzy as because we exhale up actually. And we'll be dealing with the breath later, but we exhale up to help support the whole thing. So in addition, we're getting that inner, inner pelvic tone and support for the sacrum, for the pelvis and the lumbar somewhat. And so on the exhale rolling up, the thing is you don't want to force. You don't want to be uh, out through the sacrum, out through the back body. This should be just enough of a tone to help you rise with natural spinal support. We're never talking about like putting out the curve or, or being aggressive in any way. Um, so it's just, it's kind of a, it's kind of true if you're rolling up like shit. Mm -hmm. And it's totally, it can be a total myth if you're rolling up with support. The question is how. And so when people say that, it adds into this fear that people hold around their backs. Leslie has to fight through that every day. And, and when he wanted you to roll up and down, you're like, I don't think I can do that. You know, and she did it anyway. She's like, I, don't, I feel totally supported. I don't feel any pain. And now, now she, her back pain is way better. I think the, these blogs and things like that, a lot of time, it's always, almost always the problem of not putting it in context. Like, well, mm -hmm. on what situation are you doing that? And how are you going to correct that? Are you taking into consideration all the other aspects of all? And that's why blogs get so like, oh, you know, well, the New York Times, oh, well, yoga's bad for you. Yoga's going to injure you. It was so bad for you. What are you talking about? But Put it in context. What like, yoga? How? How, how many people? Be? What is the percentage you're talking about? What are the hospital visits? Mm -hmm. They didn't mm -hmm. lift all that out. Um, Something else, something else that was really wonderful at Leslie's workshop to note is he, he just kind of tosses out these genius comments. You're like, oh, God, and then it's like, oh, it's a whole new world, right? So I have to separate all down. But he was talking about how um, the, the back body, the superficial back line of the body, which we will talk a little bit more about as we go, but the superficial back line of the body, the one that, that helps you extend and, and do this, is not actually built for weight-bearing 
load-bearing as much as, as it is for movement. Actually, the, the deep front line is built for weight-bearing, for allowing you to come up with a healthy pelvis and lumbar spine. So when we're doing all this like lifting up like this, it's extremely straining for the lumbar and the sacrum and the sitting bones, and we're seeing a lot of inflammation and even injury there. So to me, it's like if you're gonna roll up and down, there's no alternative but to roll up health, more health, as healthfully as you can. And here's, here's anatomically how I would offer you to do that. But I've, I've had a lot of those questions because the roll up is very confrontational for people with back problems. Mm -hmm. They've been told, never roll up or you're gonna like squirt your discs out like Oreo cookies. <laughs> <slapped> <laughs> <between> <laughs> yeah, don't, don't. I think I sent you. It's like, oh my God. Well, your spine is not a freaking jelly donut. It's more <laughs> stable than that. It's, it's actually, if you could support it properly, it shouldn't, it shouldn't hurt anymore if it has been hurt. If you can support it properly, mm -hmm. doing whatever modifications that you need to do, it technically should not get insanely more injured. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, so we don't have too we don't have much time left in the session. We're going to we're gonna stop at eleven forty five so we can clear the space a little bit for the class ahead. Um, we will be teaching more on neutralization on the first cue during this hour session, which is going to predominate that. These, these seven core cues and the two core qualities of contraction expansion and the foundation core expression, three elements, are great themes in and of themselves. You can play around these themes. So one class, maybe you want to focus more on the, on the lumbar wave and how, it, how it's influential in every pose. Don't skip the other ones, but, but really focus your students or focus on where you're too contracted, where you can create more space, expansion, right? Where you're too spacious, where, where you're going out in all directions in your mind or where you're destabilizing the pose because you're overreaching right now. Um, all that's really great. So we, we look at neutralization. Um, I'm an editor, so I'm going to be going through and I was what that was. editing. <laughs> number two is space. <laughs> number one, neutralize. Number two, the ultimate void of the universe, consciousness incarnate, <laughs> God, if you will. Um, no. Or like, are you putting that in the empty blank? No, that got crossed out. I, just, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's I wrote this down. Nirvana. We'll neutralize you know. We'll see you later today. Awesome. awesome. Can't wait to find out where your dentures are. Top of the door. Yeah. There you go. Thanks. So let's just read through this. Um, before before building it, before building any pose, this is the thing. It's it's hard. It was hard for me as a teacher who was used to just let's get right to it. Front foot forward, back foot forty five degrees. Wing the arms up, warrior two. I want I want up there. I want it and I want it now to realize that even if you do these other waves, before you have encouraged the student to find a lessening of partial gripping and, and hyper toning in strange parts of the body, as we tend to do if we like step forward and then we're getting ready for something, it's almost like we kind of grip it and like, yeah, let's go, I'm gonna get into a pose now. To, to soften and find that inner body movement, to allow it to move your skeleton rather than gripping the outside and kind of freezing yourself up. That, that was hard for me. Um, I like to build a mountain in like five seconds because I have, I have stuff to do, you know? So um, neutralize before, build, before building any pose. And that includes before you lift your leg up and down dog, before you come up into from a, a low lunge to a high lunge, right? before blah, 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 for anything. Um, we first soften and relax the whole inner and outer body as much as possible. That's very important because I'm, you're not going to soften and relax the whole body while you are um, while you're stepped forward preparing to come up to warrior two. You're not just going to completely like fall on your face. There has to be some kind of tone to help you keep healthy joint action when you're preparing for a pose. Or if you're in down dog and you're going to lift the leg, you soften everything, you're gonna drop on the floor. But as much as possible means look, look over the body, encourage them to, bre to breathe, to relax, to butter asana out a little bit. And then also inherit in this is to bend limbs before 
we spring up into another action in the pose. So we've got a few key terms here. Um, counteract, counterbalance. The purpose of neutralization is to counterbalance the tendency to just stay hypertonic in these practices or grip. Also to get closer to the earth so we can do something that's very important. The, the nature and purpose of aligning a yoga pose at all is to use the muscles in such a way that it allows a plumb line or a, a plumb line, lines isn't a great word because of course we're not aligned, but let's just say, to open a pathway through the bones down into the earth in such a way that you can really press. And you know you can't press with straight arms and legs. There's no, there's no, there's nowhere to go. To bend in allows you to press through the earth to the center, the core of the earth. That's, that's what you're thinking when you're getting prepared and then you take that press. You will then receive a reciprocal action, Newtonian physics, equal and opposite reaction. As you press one way, you're going to get a reciprocal lift from the arches, the soft tissues of the body, upward through the deep core muscles of the body and the muscles in general. So we, we neutralize in order to create more power in a moment than we could if we were rigid and straight and linear first. Bhadrasana, Slugasana. Slugasana is different than Bhadrasana. Bhadrasana is a, is a general softening principle in any, any pose. Slugasana is when you're just a boneless pile of slug on the ground. You're completely relaxing them to maybe build a standing pose from the complete ground. Yeah. Slugasana is very nice. It's very helpful and illustrative. Slugasana. Because we are so gripped and so used to our patterning in our body that if you tell people to relax your entire body to the ground, they'll go, okay. <laughs> like, you know, Shoulders under. You just, right, we have these patterns and these ideas of our body. So we're beginning to try to track people out of their patterning and their, their set ways of this is the way it is. Well, I'm always sore there because I've always been sore there or whatever by beginning to break that down. So if you, from where you are, to just suddenly completely release everything and just see what happens when you... It would look like your whole class was in like 28 it's, days later, I like became, right. like got the zombie. Yeah, it's like somebody <laughs> just pulled the plug out of your body and your robot. It's really fun to do. It's a really fun pose because mm -hmm. to illustrate students, tell them to do it and then tell them how to do it correctly. We did that with you guys in Kapali, right? You guys remember yeah. that, right? Remember well, that? We were like, yeah, so we're come up to... It first. I know, at first you're like... Come hey, up to sit and everyone was like, from Slugasana, like, come up to sit and everyone's like... Like a vampire coming out of a coffin, you know? Yeah, so we, what we do with Slugasana is total, from the total inner release. Body. But how can you move with the most integrity, with the most awareness, as softly as possible to build from the inside out, back up to sit. Those two Through things are just body. really beautiful to get the students into an idea of what it is to release. Because we focus so much on getting harder and stronger and bigger and stronger and taller and all whatever. Mm -hmm. Can you find relaxation, which is absolutely necessary? Um, some some other terms, and I've, the, you don't have to use all, any of these terms if you don't want to, but this is just to give you an idea of things around this concept. Um, soften, bend, relax, release the whole body, make space, let go, cascade, drip, flow, allow. Um, the tools I would add to this, Bhadrasana, Slugasana, um, Broken Giraffe, and that is when in mostly in standing positions like warrior positions, we will bend both limbs and allow the body to drape down. So here's here's a Broken Giraffe, it's that toy, the kid's toy, we'll just say I it again. I found one of those. You did? You should have it in class. <laughs> The kids' toys where you hit the bottom of the thing and, and it collapses, it's like it's a giraffe a or whatever, and then you, you let it go and it builds itself back up. So in, in the standing position, sometimes if we've created it and then we want to return back and go through the cycle again, we'll bend, we'll bend the limbs um, and then drip down hand, hand forms on the thighs if somebody's not able to go all the way down or block on the floor. And just even take um, ninja, ninja lunges, that was um, Melissa's term. So ninja lunges, hands on the floor, can even lift the front foot up and straighten the leg a little bit if you get deep and you're open enough, and then take the other into an inner thigh stretch. So just, just kind of lunging from side to side, getting your body into that idea of like, oh, I'm, I'm neutralizing now, I'm gonna create something new out of this, and breaking their patterning from like, leg here, foot here, 
get ready, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, broken giraffe is when you bend, come down, and come back up. Ninja lunges. So the, what's the difference between broken giraffe and butterasana? Is essentially it's subtle, but for butterasana, you're relaxing from the outside in the musculature. You're relaxing the muscles. And that as can much be in any pose. Any and you melt. Time. It's kind of melting the pose. Broken giraffe is releasing the tension from the joints. The joints themselves let go. So. And you bend those both knees in the pose. That is right. so freaky for people to be like, what? The thing you always want to watch, of course, when you're doing um, broken giraffe is that, first of all, people's ankle joints may not be so so have have as much range of motion as yours if you're like really bad and, and they're like this doesn't mean they can't they're not doing it then you be like bend anymore no no bend it's it's broken giraffe but maybe that's all their ankle joint will move so you gotta you gotta know that's a factor you always want the knee bending in the same direction as the toes which of course. means that the feet can move it can't be bending guy. here you gotta get people out of this concept of like your feet are stuck and they can never move but in this you can move around a little bit play with the out outer body you said broken giraffe is from the joint joints okay. right broken giraffe is releasing the tension from the joints it's really it's really done in these warrior postures mostly to Close, half moon. Mm -hmm. yeah half moon when we and half moon when we break it um when we come back down broken you giraffe so you're usually bending splits. both knees and then recreating yeah. the grounding wave, the Y wave, the pelvic wave, the lumbar wave, the axial wave. So, so broken draft is generally for standing postures. Okay. Whereas butter asana can be used in pretty much any pose. But you can do butter asana in, in so you can you can be like a warrior two, and then we're gonna take the broken giraffe. Okay, come into that that butter asana all over the body, relax a little bit more as we do this broken giraffe. Yeah. You know? So like but the cool thing is the you can begin to understand, help them understand what parts of my body am I using more effectively, like how am I using muscles here and how am I using joint tension, just the subtlety. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, the inhale, the focus on the inhale can be a way to create more space in the practice. Even neutralizing where sometimes maybe you want to lie down on the floor in the middle of your practice and take a moment where you just like let it all go. Just let it all go. Let the mind let make space. We we've really been dealing with a lot of intensity. You've done so well. Take it. Take a moment. Or you're doing a yin position, for example. So that can be an element of spaciousness. It's so easy to get really excited about this practice and mm -hmm. just work them through every pose. And they're always in this intensity and core strength and yasa and like flamethrower all over the class. And these poses are hard and and, the, and challenging for most people's bodies because. They're not used to using all of this action in these poses. We are very um, lazy creatures, many of us. Either we're lazy or we work too hard, right? There's a lot of polarity going on. So you get these students in vinyasa classes who like to overdo. Rarely do you get the people who are kind of like, whatever, and they keep coming back. That's not, you don't see that as much. You'll see those students more in the yin classes or defaulting towards their thing. Um, every rule is here to be broken, but um, so when you're talking about all this stuff, give, make space, make more space than you think because these students, you don't want to run them over. You don't want to make it so intense that when they're kind of tired one day, they're not going to come to your class because they know they have to give it all they have and they have to transform themselves in one class and you're going to ask, it's just going to feel so much every class. Let them have those moments of softening. And not just like two breaths before you build a pose. Let them be in it. And then really work them through the moment. Find those softening elements, the yin elements, to the yang practice that we have going on here. If you have the time to bring them into relaxation between poses, go for it. It's fabulous. It's a really, really nice thing to do. Mm -hmm. It's all about time, though, really. I mean, the, I highly recommend it. You have that opportunity to really intensify something and then release it. You get the, the full energetic experience, the full spectrum is available. Just saying. Um, one of the last points I just want to mention here before we break is the importance of bending. Like not just kind of bending this much, but really getting them to a place, even if you put the knees down to do it, where they're able to bend. We'll, we'll do that in class today more. But the reason is, without bent limbs, the deep core line doesn't link to itself. 
optimally. And you can't get the physics press. You can't get that, that um, ground reaction wave back up into the body through the soft tissue without first bending and pressing. So you're gonna get a lot more power. Your arches can now respond and lift, which they don't with straight limbs. So if you want the deep core line to activate, you've gotta bend first. And so really hitting that home with your students, giving them permission to do it, and showing them things like, when your arms are straight on the ground, can you push up with just your arms to sit? No, you can't even push from here to sit like this. You got no power. You gotta use your existing body lines, which is it, um, comp more compressive and also exhausting because you're using your own energy all the time to do these motions. It's stressful for the body. If you can, if you can bend, and the way we bend isn't out because that's just so fantastic on the wrist. It's like twisting the heck out of my wrist right now. To draw through the long lines of the bones and bend those elbows back, get way down here, and then it's just you get so much more help from the earth. As the bones press down, the soft tissue springs up. Now you have physics working on your behalf. We know that, but a lot of us just let it go. You know, and students are kind of like, mm, okay, jump forwards. They're not getting, nothing's happening, and in fact, it's a detriment to their practice. So, so stop it, break it down, tell them how important it is. Show them the difference. Get them on the ground. Have them be like, oh, yeah, wow. Have them jump lower or whatever we're doing, lower, or knees down, but bend the arms more so they can really get into that strengthening practice. Cool, any questions? All right, pretty straightforward. So why don't you take a short break? Uh, there's a, you know, the cafe's right next door, if you don't know that already. There's some water. No, there's water in the silver container. It's a Berkey. It's filtered. There's tea, cups, anything you want. Let me know. There's wine. Before practice. Real quick.